Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another Microsoft Flight Simulator live stream and happy Sunday. Appreciate everybody being here. I hope everybody's having a great weekend. We're about to wrap it up here with a beautiful flight from Sacramento down to Guadalajara. Welcome aboard, everybody. Captain Dom, good to see you. Vexy, welcome. Quick match, good to see you. Devin, good to see you. Captain Riyad, welcome. Ian, good to see you. 12 Cut, welcome. Gary P, good to see you. It's your boy, welcome. Booster, uh, or Reggie, how are you, my man? Good to see you, dude. Mitchell Jackson, good to see you. Tony Baldo, welcome. JD, good to see you, my friend. Captain Riyad, got you. Finnair, A320, welcome. Excelli, good to see you. Chris Clark, welcome. Snipe, good to see you. Captain Chad, welcome. Greg Elwell, good to see you. The Aviator, welcome back, man. Been a while. Hope all is well. Midwest Aviator, same to you, man. Good to see you, dude. Welcome back. Wi-Fi, good to see you, man. Leonard, good to see you. My name is Cody. Welcome back. Daniel Cop, good to see you. Uh, High Tech Club, welcome. Alex, good to see you. Christian Semprevivo, good to see you, man. Um, Joe's Aviation, welcome. Planes 001, good to see you. Johan, good to see you. Eric, good to see you, Wyatt. Welcome back. Flying FS, good to see you, man. Carson Brown, welcome. Wes Burson, good to see you. Mark, welcome back to the channel, my friend. Jackson Berg, good to see you. Kango, welcome. Clay H, good to see you. J. George, good to see you. Welcome aboard, everybody. Thanks so much for coming to hang out today. Really, really fun flights planned for us. Um, Going to be going from here in Sacramento, where we left off yesterday, all the way down to Guadalajara in Mexico. Should be a wonderful flight. We're scheduled for three hours and 29 minutes. I have a dinner that I need to go to, so I'm not going to waste any time. As much as I'd love to sit here and say hello, uh, let's jump inside the aircraft. Let's get this bad boy program ready to rock and roll, and then we can deal with chat, and we'll get everything done. So let's jump inside the aircraft. Let's start loading. Let's start boarding. Let's start doing this. So the aircraft is boarding already. We're waiting for passengers and cargo. Um, so we can go ahead and get everything kind of programmed and ready to go. So let's get our external power to the on position. We'll get our battery switch one and two as well. Go and get our navs left side, right side, and center all to the uh, nav position for our deers. Good. Continue our scrolls down here. Crew supply kick them on. Nav and logo lights on. Master start switch on the EPU. No smoking to the auto position. Emergency exits are armed, and I'll get a little bit of brightness here on the overhead panel. Wonderful. Cool. Everything's good up there. I'm happy with that. I'm going to get about half brightness up on my screens here. That should be good right about there. Same for down here. We'll get about half brightness up on these guys as well. Beautiful. Cool. Sweet. Let's come down here to the McDo. Let's start working on some things. We'll get a little bit of brightness up on this guy. Wonderful. Let's go to our init ref tab. We're going to do our init request. Should populate all of our information. SMF to MMGL with our alternative MMSP. We are Valeris 873. That is all correct. Looking for a cruise altitude today of 37,000 feet. Um... Initial cost index, I'm going to go with 15, and we'll kind of plug that in there. Beautiful. Now that that's kind of done, or at least started, let's jump over to the electronic flight bag. Let's go ahead and get our weight and balances and get everybody in here. Yuck, what's up, man? Good to see you, dude. Nick Zinni, good to see you. Haas, welcome, dude, as well. Um, <coughs> what's for dinner tonight? Not sure. Going to the in-laws. Going to the in-laws. So it's always good food there with her parents and her grandparents and her brothers. So it should be, uh, should be a good meal. I have no clue what we're having, though. No clue what we're having. Cool. Everything looks good there. Let's go to our um, ground services tab. We're going to go to the fuel. Today, we need 10,100 kilograms of fuel. So we'll go ahead and refuel the aircraft. There you go. You can see we've got it nicely refueled. Let's go to our payload now today. Again, we're going to import from Simbrief. 171 passengers, so almost a full airplane today, chat. Uh, let's go ahead and quick board that. There we go. The aircraft is boarded. John, uh, sorry, Axel Johan, good to see you, man. Thank you very much for celebrating four months. So, hello, Cap. Nice to see you back in the Fly-By-Wire 320. Yes, we did, a, we did like a test sector on Thursday. It impressed me. I wasn't having any issues with the airplane, so I figured we'd fly it for the rest of the week. Um, seeing that we've kind of uh we haven't flown this airplane in months and months and months because of the phoenix so feels good to be back man airplane's been flying great have uh, haven't really had any issues with it so uh everything is good on that end man um cool so that all looks good now we can take these numbers and throw this over here so 60.3 and 32.7 so we're gonna bump over here 60.3 oops 60.3 slash 33.7 or sorry 32.7 32.7 good we'll throw that up into there wonderful and then block fuel we obviously remember is 10.1 we'll throw that up into there beautiful gps primary is available great mopar dude getting ready for his street tacos in guadalajara it's the first place guys we're getting off the plane and we're going to get some street tacos mm. we're going to get like 20 of them i'm sure i hope in houston mopar i really hope in houston we can uh we can get some uh some street tacos at some point one night mm, dude would be absolutely awesome i'm sure we will man i'm sure we will um 
Let's see what the weather is doing here in SMF, and we'll kind of figure that. Happy Sunday, Captain. Great coincidence. I'll be flying the 5 a 320 Neo Viva Airbus LAX to MMMY in 30 minutes. See you in Mexico. Nice, Cam. Awesome, dude. Very, very cool. Enjoy your flight. Enjoy your flight, man. What's a meal service today? Uh, great question. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. You got me on the street tacos? All right, cool. Sweet. Awesome, awesome. Um, what is the weather doing here today? Winds are 140 at 4. That means we're probably going to take 17 left for departure today, chat. So let's go to SMF. We're going to go to departures. We're going to plan 17 left. We are going to be on the uh, Foothills 3 departure. It's kind of crazy. There's a Foothills 3 departure out of here, and I believe there's a Foothills departure out of Denver as well. So it's kind of cool. Um, Foxtrot Romeo Alpha is our transition. Wonderful. We'll insert that. Um, now, I usually don't do this, but just for the sake of we're flying the fly-by-wire, I'm going to get the approach kind of planned right now. Now, things may obviously change um, on our flight. It is a three-and-a-half-hour flight, so things may change, but we can go ahead and kind of guess what things are going to be doing now. So we'll go ahead and plug this in. Um, see, the winds right now are calm. Uh, so if I'm opening up my charts here and I'm having a quick little look-see here at Guadalajara, we're obviously going to be landing on runway 11 or runway 29. So with winds calm, I believe we're going to be coming in from, hmm, hold on, let's actually look at our flight plan and we can kind of decide from there. So our star actually has us coming in on runway 29, the ILS 29. So I guess that's what we'll plan for now. You can see here our star kind of takes us all the way down like that and then um, down here through to played 9000 and then we'll go ahead and grab the uh, ILS 29. So let's come down here. We're going to use the ILS 291. Is there really any difference? Hold on. Let's have a quick little look-see here at the approach charts. ILS 291. Uh, nothing there. What's the ILS 2? Okay, maybe we want the ILS 2 or the ILS Zulu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do the ILS Zulu 29 from Played. That's what we want. So ILS 29 Zulu. We want to be on the... What was it? We want to be on the Lon V1 Delta. Lon V1 Delta. Good. And then we want to have the Played transition. And uh, no approach transition. So that's good. We'll go ahead and insert that. Beautiful. Cool. And if we scroll down here, we'll remove that discontinuity. We don't need that. We'll clear that out. We'll continue to scroll down here. Everything should look good with that. Oh, yes. Look at all those. Beautiful. Cool. Sweet. That looks good to me. I'm happy with all of that. Wonderful. Let's go to our performance tab now. Let's throw in some numbers here briefly. Uh, we're looking for, well, if it's going to be 33, so we're going to do a flaps 1 slash down 0 0.5 would be the trim value on that. So we'll set that. Uh, fairly heavy today, but we're going to go with a flex of 45. Should be plenty enough to get us off. And then our V-speeds today, 37, 38, 42. And there you go. The airplane is pretty much ready to go. We are just waiting on the last passengers to board and the uh, baggage, and then we should be good to go. Right, Og, what's up, man? Good to see you, dude. We're only for departure. I'm taking 17 left. Winds are 140, sorry, 140 at 4. So definitely would be favoring the 17. So I'm going to take 17 left for departure. Yeah. Mexican Federales have us on their watch list. Cat may need to uh, ride in the cargo this flight. Maybe. Who knows, man? Who knows at this point? Um, you can ride in the lav with the Timmies. Uh oh. No, please, no. Don't send me off with the Timmies. No. And chat, look at our flight plan today. It's actually pretty cool. Uh, if I close this out and I hide this, you can look at our flight plan. It's actually really, really cool. We're going to be basically following the Baja Peninsula almost all the way down. So we should have some pretty cool views, uh, especially off the left wing here. We should have some really cool views. We're actually going to come right down um, <clears throat> past Burbank, past, past John Wayne, past LAX, um, past San Diego which is uh, right here, Dago, and then Imperial Beach, and then right past T1, TJ. We're actually going to come down here. I actually think we're going to be closer to Mexicali, I think. Yeah, Calexico, sorry. There's Calexico right there. And, um, yeah, down throughout the peninsula. Should be really cool. Should have some beautiful views of the coast along the route. It should be a wonderful flight. Very much looking forward to this one. We've never done this flight before, so definitely going to be a good one. That's going to kind of set up for tomorrow. Like I mentioned, tomorrow we're going to be going from Guadalajara all the way up to Monterey, and then Monterey down to 
Mexico City, which is somewhere uh, down here. Um, should be good. Really excited about tomorrow as well. Should be a lot of fun. Um, cool. We'll populate you. I'm actually going to get the Approach LS29 Zulu. We'll get that plugged in, and then we can get this guy open. Good. Um, looks like a great route. Should be good. Yeah, forget the horror here. It's celebrating three months. So can I get some extra leg room? I have no clue what the service is like on Valeris, but I will provide you with the best service possible, my friend. Huge no floaties to you. Thanks so much for your support for the last three months. Appreciate you being here as a member, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, cool. We're boarding up the last baggage here, so chat, we're basically good to go. So let's go upstairs. Let's go ahead and get our uh, APU to the start position. We'll jump back outside. We can listen to the APU spooling. And I believe the boarding is complete. Uh, yes, boarding is completed. Good. Very nice. Leo, celebrating 19 months. Huge no floaties to you, man. Thank you very much for support, dude. Appreciate you, mate. Valeris is an LCC. You can't get extra leg room unless you pay. There you go. He got a little busy this afternoon, but I got you uh, on the side safe flight. Thanks, Jay. Have a great day, man. Have a good uh, Sunday, man. Do you have scenery for the airports in Mexico? I do. Yes. I do, I do. Yes, yes. Do you think the Synaptic A220 will be out within the year? Tough call, Sean. Tough call, man. I, judging by the video yesterday, I said it's probably six months to a year away. So I don't know. It's a tough call. Tough call. Six months to a year is what I'm putting. Six months on a great, you know, great, they, they run into no issues. Probably closer to a year, judging by what still needs to be done. Um, external power is coming off. Beautiful. Fuel pumps are coming on. Great. Let's go ahead and get the seatbelt signs on. Let's go ahead and go to GSX. Let's prepare for pushback and departure. Wonderful. Uh, let's go ahead and throw in our initial climb. If we open up our charts here, we see the Foothills 3. Initial climb is... Uh, should give us here somewhere. Initial climb... Uh, 190. So we'll go ahead and throw that in here. We'll get this turned up a little bit. There we go. We'll get 190 plugged in. 19,000 feet. Good. Come down here. Get a little brightness on this guy. Get a little brightness on you. Good. Wonderful. Cool. Um, let's go ahead and get our anti collision light. Sorry, our beacon light on. They don't call it the anti collision light here. Let's go to our ground services. Everything has been removed. Departure Excuse me. Um,. Everything looks good there. I'm happy with all of that. Good. Whoa. Is it good as least? Uh, the importantly, the food. Yes, the food is always good. Do not worry, sir. We will provide you with the best food here today. Do not worry. Long flight today. Yeah, about three and a half hours we're scheduled for. Three hours and 29 minutes. So, yeah. Brett, good to see you, man. We're going tail to the right because we're going to one seven left. They are locking the gear. Altimeter here, two nine or eight six. We'll plug that in as well. Good. Uh, download the 77X today and two problems. One, the aircraft does not follow the LNAV and the VNAV path when autopilot and two, GSX refuses to work. Any ideas? Uh, no, everything should work. Especially if you're downloading the heavy division mod. It definitely should follow the LNAV and all that stuff. So I'm not quite sure why it's not working. I haven't really had any problems with the LNAV. Maybe try going direct to the next waypoint or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> all right, guys, park brake is off. clear. <laughs> It will. Cool. Here comes the pushback. Beautiful. We're looking great. Engine mode selector to the start position. Turn the sounds up for you guys. Enjoy engine number two. Starting now. Good. <laughs> Heavy mod, you need the 787 and the salty mod for the Captain Sim. Yeah, you need the default 787 if you don't have it. Um, I mean, the Phoenix is really good, Aviation Lover. The Phoenix is great, so... Uh, it really depends, man. Athletic Greens is ready. Yes, sir. Always. Love the static planes. They sometimes just spawn into each other. Well, those aren't static planes. Those are other players on VATSIM. Yeah. Why does it sound like the engine's dying? Hear that? Sounds like it's constantly trying to crank or something. Oh wait, no, that wouldn't be why. Engine number one, park brake set. 
We have a good engine to start. I was the PTU going crazy, right? Okay, yeah. Here. Hey Gap, how do you turn off AI planes with FSLTL? AI planes? Uh, just don't use the injector. I find sleeping at night flights, red eye is very hard. I only get about 30 minutes total sleep over 10 hours of flying. I find, I find sleeping on airplanes is hard in general. Yeah. How do you know when to start descending? If you've programmed the airplane correctly, it should tell you when you're having a top of descent and stuff like that. I think Quality Wings has officially abandoned the 787. Has there been any comments from them? I mean, I wouldn't put it... I don't think they've abandoned it. I think they're just looking for partners to help them with the process. Hey. Tow truck disconnected. Bypass pin removed. You can fall asleep instantly clear. on planes? Ah, oh, man. No. Hey, Cap, do you think a PC with a 3060 Ti and i9 10th Gen 30 gigs of RAM would run X-Plane? Yes. Alrighty. Looks like we've got two good engines. Let's go ahead and set our flaps down, position number one. Beautiful. Trim value is going to minus five. Should be good right about there. Ground spoilers are armed. Engine mode selector to the normal position. Predictive wind shear system goes on. Auto brake over to max RTO, and we are pretty much good to go here, chat. Let's go ahead and get APU off, APU bleed off, nose light to taxi. Park brake is coming off, and let's go ahead and taxi ourselves over to runway. Um, runway 17 left for our departure. Download the profile from Simbrief. What's that? Which profile? <coughs> All right, we'll use Yankee 2 and then we'll use Whiskey. Hey, Cap, how do you zoom so fast in the cockpit like that? I use my mouse zoom and it's slow. Probably have to turn up your free look speed or your zoom level. Wait, is zoom level? Yeah, maybe your zoom level. Try and turn that up to 50%. That might help. Clear on the left. Do you know how my GSX uses the big cargo loaders and not the baggage loaders? Yeah, Pilot Aaron. So what you need to do is you need to go to GSX and you need to go customize, or you need to go to GSX setting. No, you don't. Uh, I think you do customize airplane. Customize airplane, yeah. And then you click on the cargo one and you switch it to belt. You're looking for belt loaders. And you need to do that for the front and the back. So the front, cargo one, and then cargo two. So make sure you've got belt loaders. Belt. That should solve it, man. Is the ATR going to be high fidelity? Yes, they are indeed. ATR comes out on Tuesday, I believe, chat was saying. Yeah, Tuesday, man. Cap, how do you think the A220 will change what developers do, or do you think it will have no impact? Uh, probably have no impact, to be honest with you. Jesus, Reg. I haven't heard that website in years, man. Fat life, Jesus. Hey, Gab, every time I fly the A321X, my simulator crashes. Do you know why? Uh, I would do a fresh install. Remove it out of your community folder and do a fresh install. It sounds like you've got some corrupted files, maybe. Some weird things going on. Whenever I program my flight plans, I never get a top of descent. Do you know why? So in order to get a top of descent in this airplane, you need to be running the experimental version. That is the only way you'll get a top of descent. You need to run the experimental version of the airplane. So next Thursday with an ATR, yes. Next Thursday starts our two weeks, basically. Two week training in the ATR. Yeah. Shirley, what's up, man? Good to see you, dude. Welcome aboard, hope all is well. Can't wait for the ATR. Does the 600 have auto throttle? It's a prop plane, man. I don't think so, Trey. A lot of the prop, a lot of turboprops don't have auto throttle because you don't really set 
um, it's a little bit different, right, with turboprops because you kind of just leave, like you look for an RPM setting and the airplane usually won't exceed certain speeds, right? Kind of like the dash, like in the dash eight, I think you set like an N1% of like 72 and the airplane will really never get above like 260, 270 knots, so yeah. Tuesday night after dark, uh, we'll see Brandon. I gotta drop my car off on Tuesday and I'm getting into a rental car for a week while they fix my door. So I don't know like what time everything, it really depends, man. Really, really, really depends. I, pr I also wanna kinda get a flight or two in off of stream just so I don't look like a complete, you know, babbling buffoon while I'm trying to stream it. So um, we'll see, man, we'll see. We also have to do an after dark, a truck sim this week. So. I I don't know, man, if I'm being honest with you. Probably no. We'll probably just wait till Thursday to go live with it. But, yeah. How much will the ATR cost? No, the ATR is not free, Planes. Be careful what you're saying, man. The ATR is not free. The ATR is coming from a Sobo and Hans Hartman. The A220 is free. The ATR will not be free. There has been no price confirmed. If I was a betting man, I would think between 40 and 60 USD. 40 and 60 USD. Yeah, Mark, don't be an idiot, man. Uh, again, I can't control what you guys do on your own computers, but I can control what's said in my chat. So don't be stupid, man. If you're just going to torrent and delete, uh, torrent and, and, and download everything, I mean, our, our little flight sim hobby isn't going to go very far if people are just stealing the products left, right, and center. So glad to see we're getting a proper ATR. Yes, as am I. Yeah. Um, Aired celebrating 13 months. Appreciate you, dude. Huge no floaties. Thank you very, very much for your support, man. I appreciate you. Sea Captain, missing the streams. Glad to be back. Glad to have you, Mac, man. What a time to be here. Kind of like a, a mini, mini long haul today. We'll call it a short, a short long haul. Three and a half hours down to Guadalajara. Yes. Thanks so much for your support, man. 13 months. Appreciate you, dude. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Had to unplug my RTX 4080 and plug it back in. It was just a bit loose. Had a second full reinstall due to checking for updates. Glitch. About 60 gigabytes to go. Poof, Jack. Hopefully you get it, man. Hopefully you get it, dude. You've been doing it for 15 years and it's okay so far. Developers these days deserve it. Let's, listen, again, dude, Mark. I, you're not tough, man. Like, I don't understand why, why you even make it. Like I mentioned, dude, I can't control what you do. If that's what you want to do on your own time, man, then nobody's stopping you, dude. Um, but for myself, who works hand in hand with a lot of developers, uh, I respect developers and I think that they earn, deserve to be paid for their time, right? Just like you, you go to work, you want to get paid for your time, right? Yeah, makes sense, yeah? So just put a little bit of perspective, man, and it'll probably make a lot more sense to you. Um, again, I don't give a shit what you do on your own time, man, that's on you, dude. If that's the, uh, that's the mentality that you want to have, that's all you, man. But like I said, what I can control in my chat is that we don't promote that type of stuff, man. So uh, maybe suggest flying a different streamer, or finding a different streamer that uh, will accept that type of behavior because we certainly will not here, man. So yeah. Um, takeoff config is set, checked, no issues there. We'll go ahead and close the door. We were just saying goodbye to the flight attendant. We'll go ahead and line ourselves up now for runway 17 left. I'm interested in flying to Bratislava. Um, maybe. I don't know. We'll have to see. Who's bringing the A220 Synaptic Simulations? They're a new group. Yeah. Synaptic Simulations. The Astro One Racing Drone? Eh, probably not, man. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe we could do like a community flying or something like that. You know what I mean? Right, we're going to give everybody a little bit of separation here. Those last two airplanes departed pretty quick after one another. I think the one guy was in a 777, though, so he's probably going to be there way before us. So, yeah. How come you don't hear ATC? Because there is no ATC today. There is no ATC services. Nobody is online. 
pretty early for Sunday morning. It's like 9 a.m., right? So it's pretty early. West Coast. Find the Boeing 777X. Uh, we'll wait for PMDG's version of it to come out. I refuse to buy the Captain Sim 777. You'll never see that flying on my channel. Please do not spam the same thing. ETA route bugged. Uh, yeah, we got to get moving first, right? Once we get airborne, it'll actually fix itself and we'll actually get a proper time for how long it thinks it's going to be. Moving back from the Phoenix to the PMDG is like moving back 50 decades. It definitely can be for sure. Yeah, definitely can be, man. I do long hauls with the Captain Sim because I have nothing else to do long hauls in. Yep, still. I, I would still rather not do it, so yeah. He kept sorry about saying the ETR was free, got mixed up. No, you're fine, mate. You're fine, dude. Just I just don't like, you know, like I said, that's why I just said just be careful with what you're saying because somebody can take that and then next thing you know, 15 people are coming in here being like, oh, Captain Canada said that the uh, ETR was going to be free. You know how it works, man, the internet, right? So, all right, cool chat. Joystick cam is going on and today... Yes, you get to hear my nice little spiel. Today's stream is sponsored by the wonderful team over at Thrustmaster. If you'd like any more information about the products that you see me using in any of my streams, feel free to click the links above in chat or down below, whatever is easier for you. Sounds are going up. Let's get the hell out of here on our way to Guadalajara. Let's do it, chat. Throttle's up to about 50%, 40%. Looking good. All of our lights are on. We're all checked and set. Good. Chrono's going on. Let's get it, chat. Manflex 45 SRS runway auto thrust blue. Takeoff power set. A little bit of nose down pressure. A little bit of nose down pressure till 100 knots. Airspeed's alive. There's 100 knots. We'll go neutral on the stick. V1. We rotate. Pause the rate. Gear up. Autopilot's going on, back up into the flight deck. Sounds are coming back down. A hey, nice departure, chat. Absolutely beautiful. The fog covering the city over there. Looks so damn good. Looks so damn good. Anyone else hopes this plane is their office in the future? Yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of people, man. Um, initial climb today, 37,000 feet, chat. And then we will kind of go from there. If we need to step climb, we could probably step climb up to 39. But for the time being, we're just going to plug in 370. Landon, what's up, man? Good to see you, dude. What is the chrono? The chrono, chronometer. It's the stopwatch, basically. 
it's your it's your block time how long you've been flying chat 30 minutes after stream started and we're already airborne that's what i like to see chat that is what i like to see beautiful speaking of planes will the phoenix v2 come out as free if you already bought v1 yes Long time since I flew a fly-by-wire flyable now. I guess uh, it's perfect A to B, but lacks certain features. Um, if you're flying the experimental version, it's pretty much all there now. Top of climb, top of descent, SID, stars, transitions, holds, everything's there now. So, yeah. I use the Mag Mexico MMGL. Uh, I bought this scenery eons ago. I bought it last time we were doing our... I don't know how long ago was that nine months ago but I think that is yes that is exactly what I'm using I have everything in chat um, mark exclamation point scenery the link down below but yes that's what do you by chance have your TCA stick sensitivity setting shared somewhere so Matt's I, everything is default except I have the reactivity turned down slightly that's it the reactivity is at 65% landing lights are off seatbelt signs are off flight attendants can start the in-flight services Got to serve breakfast to the uh, first class, business class passengers today. Hello, Captain. How are you? Good. Yesterday I read with concern that Aerosoft say 330 still has a lot of work to do in terms of the cabin, the MCDU, and even the VNAV functionality. Considering it's already in beta, isn't that something to worry about? Depends. Depends. They said they figured it out. They said they know what's going on with the VNAV, so fingers crossed it doesn't take too, too long. Thank you for your support, man. I really do appreciate you, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Can you ask my call sign? My call sign is always the first thing right up here, man. It says the call sign right here. Call sign Valeris873. Yep. Do you have to calibrate the Airbus stick? Because when I tax the airplane, it always goes left by itself. Uh, calibration is good, yes. Yeah, I think you need to calibrate it. Yep. Do you know why I'm getting uh, low FPS on Microsoft Flight Simulator? I have a 3080 and a Ryzen 7. I should be able to fly most settings on Ultra. Uh, no, I wouldn't go Ultra, man. I mean, it's a flight simulator. It's not meant to be on Ultra. High end is perfectly fine. Medium to high end, that's all you need, man. So, yeah. Can you see my Microsoft Flight Simulator toolbar? Yeah. Active pause, camera, GSX, weather, replay, and custom toolbar. That's it. It'll be even better soon. FMS V2 and NDV V2 almost done. We'll make VNAV, etc. a lot better. And performance once again improved by quite a bit. Awesome. Great news. Great news. These next couple of years are going to be amazing for Microsoft Flight Simulator. All the amazing planes that are coming out. Yes, it's it's simply going to be unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. Try lowering vehicle slash boat settings. Interesting. Do those take a lot of performance? Downloading the Anybuilds JFK right now. Can't wait. Nice. Enjoy, man. I haven't noticed any lagged on the PFD, um, Daniel, no, no. Gonna be taking a flight soon, IRL, hope the 777 today, nice, very cool. Now that the X-Plane uh, A330 has a mic do, is it worth flying? A... E. From what I've seen, no. I've seen a couple streamers, XP72, Q8 Pilot, both great friends of the channel. Um, I went back and I watched. They've respectively both flown it, and um, it had a lot of it had a lot of problems. It has a lot of problems following the L nav. V nav is kind of more just dive bombs you right. It'll kind of descend at a nice rate, and then when you're about five miles away from the waypoint with the restriction, it kind of just dive bombs you down to the ground. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't think it's. I think it needs a few more updates before it's properly flyable yeah do you think phoenix has plans for future aircraft i mean i would assume so sean i can't speak for them but judging how well the a320 did i think it would be silly if they didn't so yeah is there any 340 300s in microsoft uh no there's a three no no there's a 330 900 that's pretty much it for free yeah looking to purchase my first yoke any recommendations the thrustmaster boeing pendular yoke system hands down the best yoke on the market sub $500 does not get any better x plane right now is pretty much dead uh, I mean I wouldn't say it's pretty much dead I think that they've seen their user base dwindle um, 
you know, I mentioned this before on streams, I would say there's probably like a 25th of the amount of people. Like for every one user that's using X-Plane, there's probably 25 using Microsoft Flight Sim. So that makes it difficult, man. And I mean, you know, there's been there's been a couple releases since X-Plane 12 came out. I think most notably the Tolis 320 Neo came out, but for $90 for a single variant of an airplane. That's, uh, yeah. That kind of just sums up the state of X-Plane right now, to be honest with you. This, this airplane that we're flying here today, completely free, didn't cost me a dime. And it's an A320 Neo, and Tolis is selling an A320 Neo for 90 USD. Crazy, man. Cap, any chance you're going to add uh, motion to your rig? No. No, probably not, man. Exactly, Sean. And that, that's kind of my that's kind of my selling point is, you know, it, I'm not talking about, listen, no matter what, you're always going to have people that, you know, are sticking to X-Plane and support X-Plane. I'm more thinking about the bigger picture here and like new people to this hobby, right? How do you tell new people? So people that don't know Tolis, people that don't know X-Plane, people that don't know Microsoft Flight Simulator, they have an unbiased opinion. How do you tell them that X-Plane is the better option than Microsoft Flight Simulator, right? Like, that's more so what I was getting at, is, is how, do you, how do you convince somebody that's brand new to this hobby to invest their money and time into X-Plane over Microsoft Flight Simulator? Pretty damn hard, man. It's almost impossible, especially when you put the two up side by side together. Most people are going to choose Microsoft Flight Simulator simply because the options are far greater, the visuals are far greater, um, right? And I think that's a lot of... A lot of people that get into flight sim, right? Like, you always kind of hear this debate, well, real pilots will choose X-Plane. Well, listen, man, if I'm being honest with you, uh, out of all the pilots that I've ever met in my life, I would say 1%, maybe 2% of pilots all around the world, real world, actually come home and use a simulator, right? Most don't use simulators. There obviously is a small percentage. You see it, Flight Deck to Sim, V1 Simulation, uh, 737NG Driver, right? Like, there's certain real world pilots that do do like the flight sim stuff but it's very rare very rare i would say over 90 percent of the flight sim community is made up of people that will never fly that uh don't care if their a320 flies one-to-one -one like it does in the real world and stuff like that right so it's difficult man it's difficult to be fair out of the box microsoft flight simulator is a better choice for a beginner 100 percent. it's not even a it's not even a question yeah what are your thoughts from yesterday's stream about the a220 uh it looks great diego um, there's two things that I took out of that. I would have really liked to seen it with textures. I would have loved to have seen the cockpit and, and kind of where they're going with the textures. And I would have really liked a release date. Um, other than that, I think the, the presentation was done really well. You can tell that they practiced it. It was very methodical. It was very, they didn't waste anybody's time. They showed us a bunch of previews. They showed us, they, they spoke about said previews. Uh, I really like how they talked about the system depth and they showed the systems that they have implemented on that. I think that's huge. I think that's great. Um, yeah, overall, I was pretty impressed, man. Pretty impressed. Like I said, only two things that I pulled out of that. I would have loved to have seen some textures inside the cockpit, seen how it looked, seen some reflections, seen some PBR, that type of stuff, seen performance-wise what it looked like. Um, and I mean, the systems, like I said, if you follow them in their Discord, you would have had over the last six months some previews to the systems that they've been working on. Um, the systems, in my opinion, are just crazy. Like, it blows me away with some of the stuff that you're going to be able to do. So, yeah. Flight Sim is one of those hobbies I got into, and I have no clue why, but I just love it. Yeah, I mean, you're not alone, dude. You're not alone. You're not alone, man. That's for sure. I don't come home and work on cars. Well, that's exactly it. Like, more importantly, you don't come home and play, uh, you know, car uh, car mechanic simulator, right, right, dog? Or, sorry, right, Mopar? Like, you know. No. Honestly, I was more excited to see the update, the beta of the 330. I don't think it's really uh, ready for beta after reading their stuff. Maybe. I don't know, man. I think Aerosoft is smart with the way that they word things. I'm, I think that they've also... Uh, you know they're they're smart man he's not going to give too much oh my god i just spilled my almost spilled my drink everywhere um he's not going to give too much details right like i think they're trying to keep it hush hush and then kind of hey guys it's ready to go so yeah do you think the atr will behave differently 180 degrees than the dash i have no clue i really don't know yeah 
Yes, absolutely, Eric. Yes, absolutely, man. Really, uh, can't really compare any of these simulators to the CE7000XR pilots train on. Both simulators are fully capable of providing 99% of the people what they need to have fun flying. Yes, agreed. Almost another radio panel down. No, radio panel's over here. That would have been mouse and keyboard on the other PC, the stream PC. Yeah. <laughs> I've noticed developers have mostly gotten away from giving release dates because none of them ever stick to them. I don't think it's necessarily that they stick to them, Rydog. I think it's just, you have to remember, man, and I'm maybe playing devil's advocate here a little bit, but you have to remember, man, this simulator is literally constantly evolving, right? Like, between sim updates, world updates, and everything, stuff is changing all the time. Asobo is continuously cheek tweaking flight models, uh, weather systems, you know, how everything is running in the simulator. So, as much as I would love to say, yeah, I'm, uh, have a pitchfork at all the developers, I think developers are finally starting to realize that when you're working in an environment that is constantly changing, release dates are silly. And also, also, I mean, the, the Redditors and the Discord, you know, mobs out there that are ready to just start, you know, canceling programs because it's not out the day or the second they said that it was going to be coming out. You know, if I was a developer, I wouldn't be giving out any fucking... I wouldn't give out a release date either, man. I would say to be announced. You know, when, when I know that it's something's ready and I know that it's going to be an imminent release, that's when I'll tell you. You know what I mean? Because I think right now it's just, you know, look at what happened with Aerosoft. I'm almost positive, and I think we can probably all agree, I'm sure the 330 was almost ready to come out. I'm, I can almost put money on it. And then Sim Update 12 came out and they ran into some huge crazy issue. Because before Sim, Sim Update 12 came out, they were like hot on the trail. They were showing releases. They gave us the paint kit. They gave us all these things that would indicate that the airplane is coming out soon. And then, you know, here we are two months later, three months later, still in limbo. No official release date from Aerosoft with just a, oh, we ran into some problems. We ran into some issues, you know, yada, yada, yada. So it really depends, man. You know you are uh, a stoner when autocorrected goes to autobud A320. Nice. <laughs> it would have been at least nice to know if the A220X uh, planned a 2023 release. Well, here's the thing, Motor City. I honestly don't think they know. Um, the thing with the A220 that separates it from, let's say, like an Aerosoft or a PMDG or a Phoenix product, Aerosoft, PMDG, any builds, these are all full-time developers. This is their job. Their job is to sit there Monday to Friday, 9 to 5, and work on this airplane. The synaptic simulation, fly-by-wire, all these guys, this is a labor of love, man. This is something that they do outside of their full-time job. So weekends, evenings, etc., etc., right? So I think it's kind of for a development group like Synaptic, who's doing this for free on their own time, it, it's... it's almost impossible to say like given it a timeline because it really just all depends man it all depends you know how life works man i mean shit sometimes you've got hours a week to sim some some weeks you just can't right you can't fit it in you're busy you got to take your car in you got to do this you got to take a friend to the airport you got to there's so many variables that come into that when you're doing it you know part-time out of labor of love it's it, it's impossible to kind of pinpoint a time um, so I understand as much as I would love to get a time like I said earlier as much as I would love for them to give us a hey This is when it's gonna be out. This is when it's gonna be It's impossible man. It's impossible for them to give us a timeline You know what I mean? And then for them why give a timeline when people are just gonna you know bitch and moan about it Let's say you give a timeline of six months. It takes seven months for your airplane to come out You've now pissed off how many people thinking that it's gonna be there. They're gonna be ready people People have like a mob mentality now, man, when it comes to releases. It's it's crazy, dude. It's crazy. Will you stream After Dark this Tuesday? Uh, we'll see, Diego. We'll see, man. I still have to do an After Dark for Truck Sim. What's the... We don't really have that much left. It's going to be tough, man. We're doing an After Dark Truck Sim either Tuesday or Wednesday, so no. Probably no ETR stream until Thursday, man, if I'm being honest with you. Probably no ETR until Thursday. Um, I'm just looking at this week, man. We gotta do... I gotta do a truck sim stream either Tuesday or Wednesday. Maybe Friday. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see, man. We'll see. I had a... I'm not sure. I'm not sure, man. Also, the systems in the AT-20 are pretty much... Uh, are so much more complex than Project than I've uh, any other aircraft we've seen. I would agree. Yes. I'm sure internally they have a release date, but they simply don't want to give it out. Yeah, and I, I can't blame them. You know, so yeah. 
you ever thought of using Flow Pro? Um, I have, a couple people have suggested it. I really don't use the top, like I really don't use my, like the only thing I really use is GSX, so I don't know man if it's really worth it, but I don't know, yeah. Faraz, how are you man? Good to see you dude. Any first flight ideas for the ATR? I have no clue man. I'd love to do Silver Airways, maybe Tampa to, Tampa to Key West, I don't know though. We'll see man, we'll see. You planning on doing some Silver Airways? Yes, absolutely I am, yeah. Thrustbuster want those wheel hours? They do, man. Yeah, they do, man. Sponsorships. Don't bite the hand that feeds you. I'm a business owner. Work 70 plus uh, uh, hours. Just contribute when I can to the project. It's great to see how many people have full-time jobs that, uh, and lives come together and make something beautiful for fun. I agree. Yeah. People want things fast and moan about the PMGG taking so long to release and then complain about developers like Captain Sim releasing bad products quickly. It's one way or other. I agree. Yeah, it's crazy. Indigo, what's up, man? Good to see you, dude. Welcome back. Hope all is well. Silver would be nice for you able to fit in a bunch of legs through the flight time. Yeah, absolutely. I think your first ATR flight should be uh, stay in Canada and do some Canadian North. Yeah, I'd have to see where Canadian North flies their ATRs, though. I don't think we have a lot of options. They're, they mainly stick, like, up north north. I don't know if we have any scenery for that. You know, so, yeah. The article I read yesterday really gave some concerns... Uh, Mathis from Aerosoft using phrases like things are mostly okay, still need a lot of work on the LNAV, VNAV, and MCDU. Yep. No, I can agree. Um, I read that and I said, hmm. Uh, I think they've really, I think they've either, they ran into a major bug or they've just put off the systems this long. But yeah, I don't know. Bahama Air does NASA to Fort Lauderdale. We don't have a good NASA scenery, though. That's the only thing. Clifton, what's up, man? 22 months. Huge no floaties to you, dude. Thank you very much for the support. I appreciate you. Two more months to go, man. Two more months to go. Thank you for your support, dude. Appreciate you as always. Thank you, thank you, thank you, man. Hope Thrustmaster brings out a high-quality Airbus stick and quadrant for enthusiasts. I wouldn't, I wouldn't bet on it. Thrustmaster is not really about that, man, to be honest with you. I don't think, at least for their civil lineup, I don't see them, like, making, like, a Warthog style for the Airbus. Who knows? Maybe. I mean, there are other options. You can get the Warthog base, and you can order an exact replica of an Airbus side stick if that's what interests you. That would probably be the best the best way of, of getting it. I don't see Thrustmaster making a high fidelity or, or like what you said, um... A higher quality quadrant I think what we have now is perfectly fine for the home enthusiast um, if you are a pilot or if you are looking for something better there are other products out there you know so um, yeah what am I drinking athletic greens athletic greens all my veggies minerals vitamins in one drink yeah since the 330 and 777 are in beta that means we're closer and closer each month uh, two very good long haulers yeah correct yeah Rainy here in DFW. Oof, that sucks, Andy. Flight Factor continues to put out teasers of the 777. Hasn't it been like three years? It's been forever. Yeah, it's been forever. I think Flight Factor has got just too much on the go right now, man. Between the 777 V2, their 787 Professional, which is just crazy. You know that they're going to come out with a $150 airplane, man. You just, you know it's going to happen. I'm, I'm waiting for the day. I'm, I'm... With their 787 Pro and their 777 V2, I'm expecting $120, $130 price tags. It's crazy, man. Valeris would be a good name for a weed strain. Not bad. If you have the throttle tech, uh, you want to pay $3,000 USD. Yeah, see, no, no thank you. Yeah. Do I use reshade? No, I don't use anything. Just default, man. Is there a way to make the cockpit look dirty? Uh, if you know how to edit textures, Joe, yeah. I don't know if there's somebody that's made a, a texture. Uh, check flightsim.to. Yeah. Sierra Sim has a good NASA scenery. Oh, maybe it finally came out. Enrique. Okay. I'll have to check then. I'll have to check. I think PMG released a 200 LR first. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure, man. Uh, your Sim Brief plan is showing a non existent SID. ARAC is updated. I'm not sure, man. Maybe your ARAC, maybe the airplane's ARAC isn't updated? I don't know. Looking forward to the Avro Vulcan. No, I don't really fly that stuff. 
Why is your Airbus named Carol? That is a great question. I have no clue, Andy. This was one of the only liveries that wasn't in 8K. I hate 8K liveries because the performance of the simulator just is atrocious when you start running 8K liveries. Um, it was one of the only non-8K liveries, so. Cam Carolina, what's up, man? Good to see you, dude. Hey, everyone. Good morning, afternoon. Flyboy. Good to see you, man. Recovering from a fat lip thanks to my eight-month-old. Oh, did you get the big old headbutt? The whole, the whole witch right in the back of the face? My fiancé gets that from the horses all the time, man. <laughs> oh, dude. I believe they're releasing the 777-300 first. I have no clue. No. Wish there was an option to make less 4K, even though 4K liveries make 1080 Ti run fast. Yeah, yeah. After yesterday's E220 stream, do you believe it will exceed the Phoenix in terms of system death and complex? Uh, complex? I think so. I mean, just in general, the, the E220 looks far more complex than the, than the A320, right? So I think it will, yes. I think it almost has to do, just to do it any value. So, yeah. Are you going to fly over Imperial IPL Waypoint? Uh, I don't think so. No, I don't think so. What's the point of 8K liveries? But uh, your guess is as good as mine, man. I have no clue. No clue. Nanda, thank you very much for the business class subscription. Welcome aboard, my friend. Thank you very, very much for your support, dude. Appreciate you. That's extremely kind. Thank you, thank you, thank you, my friend. JLI, Julian, you fly over IRL. Very cool. To suck the life out of your FPS, man. It's insane, man. Thanks for your consistency. Appreciate your lives. Hugo, thank you, man. I appreciate you being here and watching. Thank you very much for the kind words. Hey, man, I'm a firm believer that if you stick to a schedule and you offer, um, you know, a place for people to come hang out and you're consistent with that, your channel will have growth. I know that it's difficult to be consistent sometimes, especially if you've got real world job or stuff going on. But I think the most important thing is just consistency, man. For simulator screenshots, all you need is one FPS for a good picture. <laughs> no. <laughs> Two-add Microsoft links uh, draws to ortho quality with terrain slider. The ortho quality is not the performance killer, it's the draw distance. 400 looks so crisp, otherwise I hope they change that. I do agree with you on that one. Yep. Yeah. Tyson, what's up, man? Good to do you. Steve, what's up, man? Uh, going to the cheeseburger picnic today uh, to F with Randy. Nice. How many cheeseburgers are you going to pack home? Do you see that Trailer Park Boys came out with their own chips, Steve? Do you see that? I got to get some, man. Dressed all over and... Uh, what do they have? Dressed all over and something else. Dressed all over and something ketchup, I think. Yeah, dude, they came out with their own chips. They're kettle cooked chips, too. They look good. If you guys got Popeyes in Canada, you gotta try their strawberry biscuits. Strawberry biscuits? Huh. Zesty Mordants? <laughs> oh, fuck, dude. I need to go back to the days of Trailer Park Boys, man. Back to the days of Trailer Park Boys, dude. That show was just something special, man. There's something... If you're a Canadian, I swear there's just something so, like... It, they're such a national treasure, man. It's crazy, dude. How's the diet going? Good, man. I'm down uh, eight pounds. Eight pounds in like 11 days, 10 days. No, eight, di uh, 12 days. 12 days. Yeah, it's good, man. I feel good. More importantly, I feel better. I'm sleeping better. I feel like I have more energy. Um, everything, man. Everything. Yeah, it's been really, really good. Have you ever tried shared cockpit flight? I have. Yes, not in Microsoft Flight Sim, but yeah. Dill pickle dressed all over and fries and ketchup. Ah, there you go. Yeah, I need to get some of those, man. I need to figure out who, who and where is selling them and if they can ship it. Cap, do you have any Amish up your way? Yeah, we have a lot of them up here, John. Yeah. Yeah. Strawberry biscuits are amazing. Huh. Strawberry biscuits. I've had strawberry scones. I don't know if I've ever had a strawberry biscuit. Do you know if CLX is a good place to get a PC? I have no clue, Sean. I don't even know what that is. CLX. I'm not sure. 
trying your best to lose some. Honestly, man, cut your portions in half, dude. It's really the only thing I've done. I've basically cut my portions in half and a little bit of exercise, some push-ups, some sit-ups, going on nice walks with Daisy and stuff. Yeah. Summer, how are you, my friend? Hey, Cap, currently doing a flight from Belfast to Isle of Man. Hope you've been well. Good to see you. Ikea Biscuits. Welcome back, man. Sounds like a great flight. Um... I have a Canadian teacher in school said he loves poutine and instant mac and cheese whatever that is by the way in Irish I only know curry sauce and chips um, yeah mac and cheese ask him if he knows craft dinner tell him uh, craft dinner KD craft dinner man you just found those chips on so sweet Canada can you order that JD? Hold on, let's see. So Sweet Canada? So Sweet Canada. What is this? Can you just order? <coughs> Hold on. Chips? Let's see what they got here. Uh, these are expensive. They got wrap snacks? No way, dude. <laughs> they got wrap snacks on here. Holy shit, there's no way. Snoop Dogg OG barbecue cheddar. <laughs> Chat, look at some of these. Look at this shit, dude. Honey barbecue, the masterpiece honey barbecue slaps anything honey barbecue. Snoop Dogg. <laughs> oh man, sweet chili lemon pepper, that would be good. Chili cheese bugles. Oh shit. Chili cheese. Trailer Park Boys fries and ketchup sold out. No. They're sold out, dressed all over. Oh man, gotta wait for those to come out, come back. They have any of them? No. <laughs> Hidden Valley Ranch bugles. Cinnamon Toast Crunch bugles. What the fuck am I looking at right now? Cheesy garlic bread, $21 for a bag of chips, chat. Holy hell. $21. Yeah, I mean, you must really want to get that chip. Jesus. That's crazy. Bugles are unbelievable, Andy. Probably my favorite, like, yeah, probably my favorite snack. $9 for Pringles? Oh, dude. The little baby ones are the best. Wrap snack sucks. Do they really? I've never had them, Reggie. I've just, I've seen them everywhere, right? So sweet can I had no clue. Yeah. We are all in the anything goes chip uh, phase of potato life. Dude, honestly, honestly, one of my favorite things to do every time I go down to the US is I go to the grocery store and I walk down the chip aisle and I look at all the different flavors of chips. Because in Canada, we're very limited to what we have for like chips, man. We pretty much have like, I don't know, how many Canadians in chat? Like 10 flavors max? And it's all like, it's usually like four or five brands. We don't have like anything, right? Like in Canada, our potato chip game kind of sucks, man. But when you go down to the States and you walk down like the, the chip aisle, you're just like, holy shit, dude. You see flavors you didn't even know existed and you're like, whoa, you know? They have them all down here, wrap snacks. Yeah, Reggie, we'll have to, uh, you'll have to let find, show me a store that we can get anywhere. The, web, the website is for rich people with the munchies. Hey, man. I mean, everybody in Canada's got munchies. Everybody smokes up here, but yeah. Lay's Wavy, Extra Crunchy Wavy, those are the most unique. Huh. To be fair, we've all had these flavors because the U.S. allows anything to be sold as food. I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> You're not wrong. The beauties of uh, not having social health care. <laughs> Eat whatever you want. Eat and do whatever the hell you want, man. Daddy government doesn't care. Chili cheese Fritos. Honestly, my favorite are the uh, the honey barbecue Fritos. Those things are just man. I'm gonna I'm gonna send myself. I think I'm gonna. I think in Houston I'm gonna get myself a care package. I think I'm gonna get a bunch of like Chick Fil A sauce. And a bunch of stuff and get it shipped up here. Miss Vicky's? Oh, dude, delicious. Miss Vicky's are so good. Jalapeno, sour cream, and... Uh, oh, man, so good. Yeah, so good. Uh, 
You can go to the corner store and find wrap snacks. Oh, damn. Sweet chili and sour cream. It's probably my favorite one. Yeah. Honey barbecue Fritos are legit. Dude, it's my favorite one. Favorite one, Reggie. You can't buy any of that stuff up here. Yeah. How was the Mexican dinner last week? It was good, Diego. I mean, they didn't enjoy it. I got a Nashville hot chicken sandwich. Mine was fantastic. Everybody else was kind of complaining it wasn't the best food. They were very understaffed. There was like multiple 20 people birthdays. It was kind of a shit show, to be honest with you. They are very lucky that they serve fresh chips and salsa at the table because it took about an hour and 20 minutes for us to get our food. Yeah. You have to try Blue, Blue Bell ice cream? Huh. Okay. I mean, if we're talking favorites, just sit me down with a bag of original Cheetos. Crunchy or poofs, Andy? Crunchy or poof? I got to go with the puffs. Got to go with the puff Cheetos, man. Blue Bell is amazing? Huh. Never heard that. The sweet chili lemon pepper wrap snap tastes like fish food. E. That's not good. Crunchy Andy. No. My wife makes this amazing guacamole with onions, tomatoes, cilantro, and I'm sure there is more paired with the lime Tostitos. Oh, man. I could eat that right now. All of that. Oh. Ace, what's up, man? Good to see you, dude, from Nova Scotia. Thanks for coming to hang out today, man. Hope you're having a great day. How's the weather out there? Crunchy all the way. Maybe puffs here and there. No, puffs are the best, dude. Puffs are the best. I can't do crunchy, uh... I don't like crunchy Cheetos for whatever reason. Can't do it. Hey there, Cap. Hope you have a wonderful Sunday. Just did a flight from Amsterdam to Bodrin. It was beautiful. Awesome. Glad you enjoyed it, man. The puff ones get stuck in your teeth too much. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. Yeah. Just got a bag of honey barbecue Fritos at work. Motherfucker. Yeti, you work at the airport. Put those in a box. Grab like 10 of them. Put them in a box. Message me on, on, on Discord. I'll send you my address. You ship them up here and we call it a day, okay? Scoop, like get the whole scoop. Scoop them in a big box. I know there's boxes laying around. Just chuck it on the airplane. We'll be good to go. Doritos came out with a spicy barbecue. Hmm. Bluebell is the closest thing to homemade ice cream you will get. Really? Interesting. Okay. All right. Strody, what's up, man? Good to see you, dude. Hans from Tasmania. Good to see you, Hans. Thanks for coming to hang out. Alex, celebrating five months. Appreciate you, dudes. It's mini long haul. It is. Yes. The mini long hauls. Huge no floaties to you, man. Thanks so much for support, Alex. Appreciate you, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It was the last one in the vending machine. Just cruel, man. You're just a cruel person, Yeti. Just cruel, man. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get all the bags of honey barbecue Fritos and not give you any. Oh, and keto, and we're talking about all these chips. Andy, listen, last night with this new diet, I got to be honest with you, dude. It's It's been such a shock. I'm not even two weeks in yet. I'm like only a week and a half in, and it's still such a shock that I find myself sitting here late at night after stretching, and I'm just watching all these like food reviews and stuff, and I, and I actually have to turn my computer off because I'm so damn hungry. That it's like, I just can't do this to myself, man. And I, and I said, like, I'm doing this as a challenge, right? I'm, I'm literally doing this as a challenge to myself. So I can't be teasing myself with, you know, with, uh, with all these treats and snacks and stuff that I cannot have. I literally am living right now off my meal plan. And um, I ordered this specific uh, trail mix that I've been eating. And yeah. Have you already bought the tractor? Yes, I did buy the tractor, Diego. I bought it uh, on Friday. Friday morning, I bought the tractor. 1968 Massey Ferguson 180. Yep. Yep. 1968 Massey. What about BioSteel? Yeah, BioSteel's good, but BioSteel's just a drink, right? And it's, uh, it has no calories. So it's good. Kelmo, what's up, man? Good to see you, dude. Need some Farmer Canada shorts? <laughs> You ever thought of Kawartha ice cream? It's unbelievable. Uh, I think I've had that. <coughs> There's one up here as well, Captain Dom, up by the up by uh, my fiance's cottage, about two hours away. I can't remember what it's called, but um, oh man, it's incredible. Yeah. What about Prime Hydration? I've never tried it because I refuse to pay fifteen dollars a bottle to already 
multi-millionaires. Why are you charging $15? You literally are some of the richest kids in the world. <clears throat> and you're charging $15 for a bottle of this coconut water, essentially. What's the worst turbulence you've ever had at Microsoft Flight Simulator live weather? Probably enough to kick off the, uh, the autopilot. Yeah. How many gears has the tractor? It's got first, second, and third, and reverse. So four. Cap, yeah, have you ever tried uh, faucet water? Uh, like from the faucet? <laughs> or is it like an actual thing? Balls of Prime, we're going for 100 pounds over an eBay. It's so fucking stupid, man. Like, talk about how we are absolutely fucked as a society when people are paying $100 because KSI put out a fucking drink, dude. Like... Tell me that we are not fucked going forward, chat. <laughs> Tell me that we are not in serious trouble, man. Like, it's absolutely ridiculous, dude. Try to run and pay $3. Sure, man, at $3, no problem. That, that makes sense. $3, sure. I'd buy that. But, like, people... People... Uh, what is it? Jake Paul? What, not Jake Paul. Logan, Logan Paul and KSI put out a... A hydration, like a, a, not an energy drink, like a, like a, a Gatorade or a Powerade, but it has no sugar and it's, yeah. You seen one for fourteen? They they're here all the time. I see people putting them on Facebook Marketplace for fifteen dollars, twenty dollars a bottle. It's because Pete, listen, dude. Everybody's trying to become an entrepreneur nowadays, right? Everybody's looking to make a quick buck. With the way that the world is right now, with stupid shit like this going on, it, it, it's easy to make a quick 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 thousand dollars, right? With the right investments. And I think that's why you see so much of this shit going on right now. It's just because people are, you know, they're, when, it, when things become available, you have one group of people that puts all their money together and they buy the entire stock and then they control the price of it. It's, it's crazy, man. Circle K has it for two ninety nine. I haven't seen any of them at Circle K. Prime Hydration. Are they even in Canada now? I don't even know. If you bottle anything, people tend to pay for it. It's crazy, man. Yeah, I missed what you were... Did you explain what it was? Uh, the faucet water? Time to ask ChatGP how to make money. Yeah. Thoughts on crypto? I mean... I don't understand it, dude. I, I have buddies that invest in crypto. I have buddies that have made hundreds of thousands of dollars off crypto. They try and explain it to me, and it still makes absolutely no sense to me, dude. I just... I, I don't understand how a computer makes algorithms that turns that into money that people then buy. What? It makes no sense, man. I don't understand it. Please don't try and explain it. I just, it just does not make sense to me, man. You can get them in shops for two pounds, apparently, but I've never seen them. People buy them and sell them massive markups. Yeah, that's exactly what they do. Yeah. Would you invest in gold? Gold is probably the best investment. Um, or one of the best investments right now. Um, but yeah, no, I do not invest in really anything. Listen, man, I've... <laughs> over the last year and a half, two years, I've been pretty much spending what I'm making. Uh, investing it in the farm. Investing it in my future. Right? I don't, uh, I'm not a big fan of, like, investing your money in banks and just having it, like, you know, minimally increase over 10 years, 20 years. I took a lot of my money and I invested in this property, as many of you know. My life goal is to pay off the mortgage on this property over the next 25 years and in 30 years sell the property for three or four times what I paid for it and that's my retirement fund, right? Um, paid half a million dollars for the property. So I'd like to see two, three, four million dollars off the land by the time I'm ready to sell it. That would be my ideal uh, situation. That's kind of what I'm banking on. You know what I mean? You, you literally, in today's world, depending on where you live, there is no better investment than land. Land right now, and especially the way that Canada, the US, other countries are growing, land is the best investment that you can get. If you can find a chunk of land, five acres, two acres, a hundred acres, whatever it is, and you have the means and the money to pay for it, I highly suggest investing in land. Real estate, land, gold, that type of stuff is just one of those things that I just, it's, it's only going to continue to rise. 
it's only going to continue to rise. Yeah. By dirt, exactly. Exactly, man. Yeah. Well, exactly, R6. Exactly. And you go to the bank, you know, and yeah, you may not have, you know, half a million dollars sitting in the bank, but if you've got property um, that's under your name worth half a million, three quarters of a million, a million. Especially here in like Ottawa, man, where I live, I mean, they can't build houses fast enough. And I think that's, that's a problem for a lot of countries in Canada right now. It's not just Ottawa that's going through that. They cannot build homes, homes and affordable housing and that type of stuff fast enough here. It's, it's crazy. So my hope is that I'm about right now, 15 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes outside the city. Like I said, my, my hope in the next 25, 30 years is that Ottawa expands and it expands to a point where it reaches out to where the farm is and we can easily then sell that land or a chunk of our land, right? I own 36 acres. I can sell a chunk of that 36 acres to, um, you know, to a development group or to some, who knows, man, right? Who knows? <clears throat> Central banks are willing to devalue their currency to make the economy look good. Yep. We live in a crazy time right now, man. Crazy time, dude. I bought a star, so I guess that's got, I got that thing going for me. There you go. There you go. Contrails in sight. Yeah, somebody's up over here. What, um... I'm gonna bump our speed up. We're gonna do Mach 8. Well, we'll do Mach 8 1. Sure, why not? Mach 8 1. I don't know exactly where we are right now. We'll have a quick little look. I don't think we've left the US quite yet. I think we're, uh, we're getting close though. Yeah, we're down here to, uh, Burbank, Pasadena. I thought we would have actually flown right over top of Palm Springs. Where's Palm Springs? Down here a little bit more. We may actually get, now. there's Palm Springs right there. Might see it. About to pass over the LA area? Yes. How are the winds? Good. I think there's a little bit of a tailwind right now. Yeah, 48 knot tailwind, so it's got us nice, almost 500 knot ground speed. Actually, we will be up to 500 knots here. There you go. 500 knots over the ground right now. So very good. Very good. Do you see 737 inch driver is moving over to the 330? Yeah, very interesting move, to be honest with you. They must have uh, whatever new airline he's flying for. They must have offered him some serious coin, man. Um, I mean, that's quite a change to go from a 737 type rate to a, to a 330. That's uh, I mean, that's about as 180 as you can go, in my opinion. Most 737s, you know, captains or first officers, you would usually see them move up in the Boeing ranks, right? Go to a 75, 76, 777, 74, something like that. So, yeah. Looking at it from uh, perspective now, I understand why it doesn't make much sense to spend uh, on a 4090. Um, I mean, yeah, at least for me right now, Diego, like I said, man, it's, I'm not, you know, listen, dude, if you can afford a 4090, there's absolutely nothing wrong with getting a 4090, right? I mean, my problem is, is that if we continue down the way that we are now, where people are spending that kind of money on, for, then NVIDIA is not going to learn any lessons, right? NVIDIA is going to keep, keep, you know, uh, putting these prices that are just so absurd and so overvalue that it's just going to continue to make the market just that much crazier. Um, yeah, there's Ontario beneath us. K-O-N-T chat. We're going to have Vertical Sim Ontario soon, hopefully. Um, and that's actually where I'm flying into for the uh, for the Expo. Not the Expo, sorry. For World Flight. <laughs> I'm flying into Houston for the Expo. This is for World Flight we're flying into there. KLM is swapping their 7.3s for A320 family as well here. We'll see plenty of them. My office is next to Schiphol. Very cool. Yeah. Insane details on the Synaptic A220. It will justify me getting a 4090. Maybe. I mean, I think by the time that's out, Paul, we're going to have the 5,000 announced at least and on the way. And uh, I think that's what I'm banking my money on. I think for me personally, um, I've been debating this for a while now. I may pull the trigger and I may do an early build. I may get myself a 7800X 3D. I'm, I think I'm moving over to, to AMD for my next CPU. 
Um, I'm thinking of going to the uh, 7800X 3D uh, with DDR5 RAM and kind of doing that. So I may end up doing that sooner than later, towards the end of the year maybe. Uh, maybe in like, you know, end of summer, towards the end of summer into fall. I may look at doing something like that. And... Um, uh, and then kind of just waiting for the 5000 series to come out. So we'll see. Yeah. Join the AMD Master Race. I mean, dude, AMD's... The 7800X 3D, that CPU is just an absolute beast, dude. It's insane, man. You're getting a 7800X 3D and a 4090? You are a lucky man, sir. You are a lucky man. If I didn't have all this stuff going on, man, if I didn't have to just spend ten grand on a tractor, I'd be right there with you, man. But, uh, you know, my current setup... I think is perfectly fine now that we've got the dual PC set up as well. I think streams are fine. You know, as much as I'd love to get 60 FPS everywhere I go, it's not necessarily needed. It's more of a want. It's not really a need. You know, I'm not struggling with performance as is. Very few times the stream doesn't look appealing when we're flying into airports, so... Yeah. How's the farm, by the way? Everything's good? Good. Maybe the time the 5000 series is announced, the i9-14900K might make a better option. Maybe. We'll see. We'll see. I doubt it, but yeah. We'll see, man. Have you ever heard of the British plane model company Premier Planes? They were worldwide in Europe and earlier selling on board in the duty-free airport side that they stopped due to COVID. I have not. No. Um, a lot of the... I'm not really into the smaller model toys, like the 1-400s, to the 1-500s. to I'm not really interested in those ones. I like the 1 to 200s or the 1 to 150s. I have a bunch of 1 to 150, 1 to 200s. Um, I much prefer those models, and I like Skymark. Skymark makes unbelievable models. Cap, I would recommend Intel CPU because they have the fastest single thread performance, and that's what's best for Microsoft. Go, go, listen, Eric, I would agree with you for the most part, man, but the 7800X 3D is absolutely destroying the 13900K. Like, it's, it's not even close, man. It's not even close. The 7800X 3D is an absolute animal. Uh, and that's what I was saying by... It's... it's it's All you gotta do is go read some reviews on it, man. That that CPU destroys the 13900K. Um, it's, it's pretty crazy. Currently, I have a 5800X 3D with a 3080 Ti. Um, and I have 100 FPS in the Phoenix uh, at 1080p with ultra mixed settings. Uh, performs really well compared to X.12. Yes, definitely does. Yeah. Upgrading soon. I have no idea. CPUs only understanding GPUs. CPUs are important, man. Especially if you're going to use, like, for, like, Microsoft and, and X-Plane and programs that really focus on, um, you know, they're pretty CPU intensive. Um, definitely do your research, man. And, and definitely don't, don't put out you know, five years ago, three years ago, I would have laughed when I said that, you know, AMD CPUs are going to be right up there with Intel. But listen, dude, Intel's been slacking. The last couple of years, Intel's been slacking. Um, the the AMD chips are, like I said, in most scenarios, the 7800X 3D is beating the, the i9-13900K in almost every situation, every scenario. Um... And it's, I think it's $100 cheaper as well. So, price to performance, man. Um, I'm, I'm ready to move on. I just built, I mean, my stream PC uses a, an AMD chip as well. So, yeah. It's all about that massive X3D on the die cache. There you go. Are you getting a 4K monitor? Uh, I'm not going to go to 4K immediately. going to go to 1440p Airbus guy. Um, I don't want to do that, that whole jump up to 4K. Um, but 1440p for sure for the next build, yes. Plus, it's way lower on power usage. Oh, yeah, it's not even close. The power usage is insane. Yeah. The 7800X 3D is better than the 7900. Yeah, the 7950X 3D. Yeah, yeah. 4K and then stream in HD at 8 megabits. Maybe. Could do that. <clears throat> Dan, what's up, man? Good to see you, dude. 1440p is elite. Yeah, that's what I think I'm going to go with. Yeah. Where are we heading for tomorrow's stream? We are going from Guadalajara to Monterey and then down to Mexico City. 
tomorrow's gonna be a lot of fun. Speaking of which, we need a thumbnail. Oh my, that was loud. Chat, we need a thumbnail. Hold on. We need a thumbnail for tomorrow's stream, chat. That is good right about there. Valeris, we're gonna be in this airplane tomorrow as well. Screenshot. That is our screenshot for tomorrow, chat. Done. Done, done, done. No, don't. That was sarcasm. <laughs> I'm using a TV as a model. Well, you know I don't understand half of this stuff, Less. High altitude ops. Coming into Mexico City? Yes. All that aside, get an OLED if you like deep pockets, but I myself won. My God, it's pretty with Microsoft Flight Simulator. What, like one of those like 40 something inch flat widescreen things? Seems like you're enjoying the fly-by-wire. I am. Yeah, no issues with it this week so far, man. It's been really good. Yep. You need a different motherboard? Yes, you do. Does anyone know how to get SIDS and STARS on Simbrief? The flight plan doesn't show me what ones to type into the MIC do. Uh, do you have a Navigraph? Make sure you have Navigraph. You need to have Navigraph and then it should give you kind of like this. Like Foothills 3 for the departure and then Lon, Lon V1 Delta for the arrival. Make sure your ARAC is up to date. What's a good 30 plus inch monitor? Is 4K necessary? You don't have to run 4K, 1440p. I still run in 1080p, man. Yeah. What time do you have set? Uh, real time. Real time. It's 1024 a.m. apparently. Real time. Taking an airline operations class this summer. You're going to be flying the A320 FTD. Super excited for this. Awesome. God, wish you all the best, man. Use a 42-inch OLED for my PC. It's fantastic. Yeah, no, no doubt for sure. Just completed a flight from Chicago Midway to Newark with United landed with a 25 knot crosswind. Woof. Hey, Gap, just got the fly Tampa, Toronto. You were right. One of the best sceneries I have seen. Uh, not sure if it's accurate as I'm not Canadian, but it looks incredible. It is, Andre. Yeah. It's a couple years old, Andre. Um, as far as like the signage, the only way I can tell is the signage around the airport, but it's Pearson. Nothing has really changed with it. It's, it's an up to date. Uh, version of the airport. So just judging by some of the signage and the ads and stuff that are around the airport, um, it's a couple years old, but nothing wrong with that, man. Do you plan on doing any India ops? Yes. Yeah. Hey, Cap. Sorry I'm late to the party again. Hope you're uh, keeping well. I am, Todd. Good to see you, man. Yeah, welcome back. A chance of another trucker sim in the future? Always get a kick out of that. Yes, this week we're going to be doing truck sim. Uh, Tuesday or Wednesday. Tuesday, Wednesday, or Friday. I'm not quite sure, JD. Whatever day I have a Whatever day I have time and a chance to do it, we'll, we'll be doing it. But it's either going to be Tuesday, Wednesday, or Friday this week. I have to admit, the 4K is heavy to run. Even my 3080 Ti sweats barely holds 50, 60 FPS at this resolution. 1080p tests, we're getting twice as much. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Flew out of it last week. IRL. Nice, Ato. Very cool. Cap, did you change your processor and motherboard? Can you reuse your M.2s? Yes. You can you reuse your M.2s, SSDs, um, hard drives? Yeah. No. Vess, what's up, my friend? Speaking of Fly Tampa, what's up uh, with them? Why they didn't bought anything out since Corfu? Yeah, it's it's been a while, man. It's been a while, and it's been they've been extremely quiet. Um, I know that they're working on Montreal. I know that they're working on Amsterdam. I know that they're working on. There was another one that they're working on. I can't remember. But yeah. Is that the Salton Sea in the background? I don't think so. No, that's, uh, what's this? This is uh, out of Palm Springs. What water? Oh, wait, is this Salton Sea? This may be the Salton Sea, actually. You're correct. Why do they call it the Salton Sea? You want Toronto on Xbox? It's been too long. Yeah, it's crazy. Is that water salty? Is it salt water out there? Oh, it is salt water? Damn. That's crazy, I didn't know. 
Heard someone made an X-Plane add-on that introduced scenery streaming like Microsoft Flight Simulator. Is that legit or fake news? No, it's legit. I've seen it. It's called Auto Ortho. Doesn't work as, as good as it's advertised, but it does work. Yeah. Navigraph integration, the A220 is amazing. Yes, it was very cool, Sean. I do agree. Unfortunately not, Dash Rad. Um, unfortunately not, man. It, it's kind of heavy on performance. Yeah. Are there sharks in there? Supposedly it stinks, so it's a lot of sulfur then. It's got to be sulfur. If it stinks, it's got to be sulfur. called the Salton Sea because there no water drains out of it. Interesting. Huh. Do people go swimming in it? Like, can you swim in it? Or is it like one of those, like, you don't, you don't touch it? Like, do people own boats, like saltwater boats and engines and shit and go through there? Or is it just like this water that nobody goes into? Quite toxic. Okay, interesting. At least FSLTL is much better performance-wise compared to AIG. Yes, that's for sure. Thought FSLTL models were FPS friendly. No, or am I bugging? They are. It's definitely better. It's the better option between AIG and that. But um, I still notice personally, Vest, like when we're flying a major event, I'll lose like, I mean, man, we've seen seven to ten FPS. Like, we'll go from, like, getting 25 FPS flying in a major event on Vatsim to when I log off getting, like, 33 to 35 FPS. So, it, it can have big performance. Yeah. Okay, next up, Sultan Sea versus the Houston Ship Channel. Uh-oh. I've never seen that. Reg, where is that? How far is that of a drive from where we're staying? That'd be kind of cool to see. It's shrinking due to water diversions. Yeah. Fly Tampa should bring their beloved Eham V2. Yeah, they're supposed to. That was their next project, but I don't know, man. California's largest lake, though, oddly enough. Yeah, no, no doubt. No doubt. Didn't Gaia Sim merge with Microsoft? I think so. They do a lot of the handcrafted airports now, Trey. Yeah. John Xander, what's up, man? Good to see you, dude. Welcome back. Hope you're doing well. Are you trying the C700 Longitude anytime soon? Just trust me, it's great. Very similar characteristics. Uh, something like a 737 has an APU, auto thrust, etc. Maybe Jens, we'll see, man. Maybe, dude. I don't have any plans to do it right now, but yeah. Is Fly Tampa working on Dubai? I have no clue. I don't think so, but I don't know. I don't know. It takes a lot of FPS, unfortunately. Would love it if someone would make a way around taking so much FPS. I agree. Yeah. They're probably silent on it somehow. I'm sure many people will buy it. Absolutely, dude. Yeah. You can technically swim in it, but your body will rot from the inside out. Oof, that's not good, dude. Houston Ship Channel runs from Galveston Bay, just east of downtown Houston. Damn, really? Huh. San Diego is to our west. Yep, correct. They said YYZ would come to Xbox and Sim Update 9, but it's been long overdue. Yeah, we're on Sim Update 12 now. Jeez, that's a little crazy. Is there a stream Tuesday with the ATR? We'll see, Strody. I'm not sure yet, man. I'm not sure yet, dude. I've got to get a truck sim stream in this week as well, so... I don't know, man. We'll see. We'll see. We may just wait for Thursday for the ATR and kind of gives me a day or two to learn it a little bit outside of stream, so we'll see, man. Any plans to find a Malaga? Uh, no. Not right now. No. That may change, but yeah. Honda, thanks for your subscription. Pat, thanks for your subscription as well, man. Appreciate it, dude. I'm waiting for Fly Tampa Amsterdam. They better release that thing before making Dubai. Yes. Amsterdam, they've already said Amsterdam is next up, but yeah. Houston Channel, one of the most challenging to navigate. My dad's cousin was a Houston pilot for years, uh, but now retired. Very cool. Huh. Practice flights? Yeah, definitely going to get some practice flights in, though, for sure. GPS may take you to the 610 East over the ship channel bridge. 
You can see all the oil refineries and shipping ports from the bridge. My dad grew up near there. Huh. That'd be really cool to go see, for sure. How you liking the fly-by-wire? So far, so good, man. Deliver to the airport, you're going to take off from truck sim. Huh. I wish. Badly need a Frankfurt scenery? Yes. Yes. There's the border, chat. The border. This is the US of A, and we are now over Mexico airspace. Yes, we are, chat. Look at this. Boom. Just crossed over. There's Calexico International Airport. Right there. And there we go. Can we hear the ATR sounds? Yes, I'm excited for that as well. Hear the prop. Does the prop do the same thing as like in the in the dash eight? Does anybody know that? Does the prop go like make that wall like when you put it in the beta mode and shit? As a native uh, Houstonian and a car guy, I'm very good tour guide. Good. Good, good, good. The mega airports all over the world just feel uh, free real estate for third-party devs. A lot more money to burn from ones like Frankfurt, Amsterdam. Yes, of course. Yeah. Meaning Statui? Yes, Statui's down here. Yeah. Dubai is fine. Flight Sim. Uh, TO version. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. How many miles until top of descent? Oh, dude, probably a thousand. 892. Better than I thought. 892. I need to meet Mattress Matt? No, that sounds like one I can miss. Reg. <laughs> sounds are part of the reason I love the Q400. I agree, 100%. Yeah. Mattress Mac, what's that? <clears throat> Why do I switch ATC? What do you mean? There is no ATC online. Anonym. Bienvenidos a Mexico. How far a drive is it from uh, to the Mexico border from Houston? A couple hours? I don't think beta mode uh, is in the sim. I hope it's implemented because of the ATR. Yeah, I hope so as well. I'm really hoping so. Considering it's done with each, uh, with a Sobo as well, I'm, I'm hoping they do. It does the engine thing. <laughs> All right, good. Oh, was he ready? 10 million. Wow. Mexico's like six to seven hour drive. Damn. Say chill on what's up, man. Good to see you, dude. Very cool metro. Awesome, man. Glad you're having a good Sunday. SWS implemented their own beta range on the Kodiak. Okay, so they definitely did less. They definitely did then. You gotta go drive in Canada? Hmm. I don't know, man. Canadian roads are pretty uh pretty messed up. Reverse prop is there and it has worked. Okay, good. Cap, when you land, did you ever knock off uh, one engine while taxiing to the terminal? I know some airlines do that, especially with smaller airports. Uh, sometimes, Sanjay. Yeah, it depends, man. Yeah, it depends. I've not flown much in the last couple of months. Still blows my mind how good the scenery streaming looks uh, at your streams. I even have a 4 terabyte hard disk space for it. Yeah, it's beautiful, man. Yeah, beautiful. Texas is a big state. Yeah, yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yeah, just wondering if the E32NX is worth revisiting after you haven't flown in a while. Yeah, the experimental version? Absolutely. Absolutely, man. I've had no issues with the experimental version. Everything's working as intended. Yeah, it's pretty good, man. Pretty good. There's a couple things here and there that may be a little bit quirky, but... Yeah, it's good. Texas is overrated. Easy there, Mr. Forced to be there, John. You were literally forced to live there and forced to be there with your deployment, so it's... I can understand how you may not have the the best the best uh, opinion on it. Um, when does the ATR come for Microsoft? On Tuesday, the 25th. We need to get some magnetic mods for the Bravo to do beta, correct? No, well, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah.
I like the 5OR, but man, the Phoenix cockpit looks so much better. Yes, so well, absolutely. There's no doubt about that, Andre. No doubt about that. Yeah. So I'll work on the visuals for lighting of the E320 and the 3D. Uh, the work some of these guys do is so complex, it's amazing. I agree. Yeah. yeah. Can someone agree with that statement about Texas? I can't wait to go, man. First time for me. The other thing I don't like the Flybar 320 is the font that they use in the cockpit. It's hard to read slash see. I can agree with that as well. Yeah. Tango celebrating 15 months. Huge no floaties to you, man. Thank you very much for the 15 months, dude. The, appreciate you. Zcap, 15 months. Time really flies by fast. Close to that golden maple leaf. The best flight sim YouTuber I have seen. Keep it up. Tango, thank you for your support, my friend. I appreciate you. Thank you for the kind words as well, man. That's extremely kind. Thank you, thank you, thank you, dude. Is there a noticeable difference FPS-wise between the Phoenix and the Fly-by-Wire? I might get a slightly better performance on the fly-by-wire, but they're both pretty close, man. Yeah. They have the detents using magnets to set up the range. Uh, just more things to buy for the sim. Interesting. You know, Les, there's uh, that guy, the flight sim factory or whatever. The one that has the detents for like the 737 and stuff. I think he makes a ATR slash Q400 pack. So, yeah. Flight Sim Factory, I think it's called. The food at some places? Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited for the food, man. I'm excited for the food. I'm excited to try Whataburger for the first time. I'm excited to try Canes for the first time. I'm excited for some late night munchy trips with Mopar down to maybe like Sonic to grab a hot dog and some, uh, some crushed ice or something. I'm excited for all of that. We'll be streaming the ATR test on Tuesday. We'll see. We'll see Metro. I'm not quite sure yet, man. Yeah, that barbecue place, dude, I'm telling you, man. The pit room, either the pit room or Papa's barbecue. Man. Jack in the box? No, 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 no. We're not doing Jack in the box. Don't be silly. Jack in the box is right up there with McDonald's. We don't need to try that. Better bring your shorts and your sunscreen. It'll be hot in June. Yes, and baby powder. Captain Mopar go to White Castle. Wait, do they have White Castle down there? I've never been to White Castle as well. If they got White Castle Mopar, we got to put that on the list as well, man. Diet, dude, I am on a diet right now, Wash, just for the expo. Not even kidding. Not even kidding. Two and a half months of diet just to gain 10 pounds when I go to the expo. <laughs> and then back on the diet when I get back. There is no White Castle? Okay. White Castle is ass? I've never had White Castle. Jack in the crack. Oh, man. Must be drunk to consume White Castle. Oh. If you go to White Castle, bring baby wipes. Oh, Jesus Christ. BRB shawarma's up for dinner. Ooh, nice. Short visit. Glad to see you were doing well. Have a great flight. David, take care, my friend. Thanks for coming to stop by. Remember, guys, if you are enjoying, don't forget to smash down the like. We're looking for 300 likes today. When does the ATR come? Tuesday. Just booked my flight tickets to the expo. Just need the days off now. Hey, nice. You said, you said you won't know till like the beginning of June though, right, Kevin? And then maybe you can like switch switch routes or something. Look at the ortho down there, Chad. This looks stunning, man. Holy. Waffle House? Definitely going to Waffle House. I've already been there plenty of times. As somebody who was very fortunate to uh, have family that lived in Florida, I've seen every everything Waffle House has to offer. Trust me. Uh, love Waffle House, though. Great place to go for breakfast, man. Yeah. Withering burgers are great, but there's a reason they're called murder burgers. Jesus. When does the 380 come out? No release date. Yeah. You'll gain 10 pounds alone at Whataburger? Nah, I'm just going once. One and done, John. One and done. Just need to try it once, man. Just to, just to put it on the list of things I've tried. I need Whataburger, curly fries, some type of burger, and uh, I don't know. We'll see what else. Can you go back to Palm Springs? It's been a while. Yes, we need to go back to Palm Springs. Any plans for the AN220? Uh, not that I can think of, CHLM, no. America, so many fast food chains here in Europe. We basically have McDonald's and Burger King and KFC. Yep, that's pretty much the same for Canada as well, man. We are very limited. Very limited. Yeah. Waffle House, I grade by how their grits are. See, I don't do grits, Reg. Um, Waffle House just wins because of how fast it is how uh like it's just quick service man you're in the door you're sitting within two minutes 
You've got your you got your your meal ordered. It's there usually within five or ten minutes. You're out the door within 20, 20 to thirty minutes. You know, the ten pounds will come from the double double animal style. You get it in and out with the animal style fries, Flyboy. Yes, sir. <laughs> Dude, so excited. Is Waffle House like IHOP? IHOP sucks. IHOP is extremely overrated. Yeah. He has a Q400 using the same detent system and flaps in the 737 kit. Man, he has now over 15 different mod sets for the Bravo. And they're expensive, less. I need to hit him up and say, hey, I'm a streamer. Send me these to review for you. Because, man, I don't, they're like 100 bucks each, aren't they? 120 bucks each? If their grits are good, that means they have good cooking Waffle House. See, there you go. Do you know when the 7.5 is coming? No, we don't have release dates for any of these, man. Yeah. You want to try sausage, pretzels, and beer in Germany? Ooh, Oktoberfest? Yeah. Yes, but you need two sets, just in case. <laughs> Correct. Kyle, I got to try this place uh, you got on your food list. I got to try the place you got it. Which one? Captain Dom. Neapolitan Shake? Ooh. Is this the only leg today? Yes, it's a three and a half hour flight. So yeah, only only leg today to get us down to Mexico. Flying into Houston on the 320 and back on a Max 8. Very cool. I'm on uh, four A220s. <laughs> four A220s and I put in my first class upgrade request. So I think it's $200 each way. Yeah, $200 it was 400 and something plus tax. It was 400 plus tax. I think it was like 430 after tax. But that's my first class upgrade from Toronto to Houston and then from Houston back to Toronto. So fingers crossed, hopefully we get it. Almost a four hour flight down to Houston and a three and a half, 340 from Houston to Toronto. So yeah, we are going to Bucky's. They don't, they're like far though, Reg, aren't they? I want to get some beef jerky from Bucky's, but yeah. Nice, you can provide some insight to the Synaptic guys after spending so much time on the E220, right? Exactly. The barbecue place you're going to in Houston uh, is now just ranked number three. Which one? The pit room? The pit room looks incredible. Cap needs to go back to his fiance's with an uh, eye break for beaver shirts. Jesus Christ. I'll get her one, Reg, that'll be even better. Yeah, hold on, Justin, what's the place you linked me to the other day? The turkey leg or something like that? That place looks wowzers. Incredible, man. Bucky's pulled pork sandwich. Ooh, baby. Fire from Iran. There's good routes to Istanbul. Yep, yeah, there definitely are. Daisy must get a Buckeye, uh, Bucky dog toy. Oh, man. I want to try out the food places you're going to, I meant. Ah, yeah. Well, you're going to be there. There's tons of places, man. Yeah. I'd like to upgrade too, but given uh, that I'm on standby at the moment, an upgrade will be a stretch. Hey, man, if they... You know what's beauty, though, Kevin? I don't know if they still do this, but back in the day, Kevin, when you used to fly on standby, if there was first class available, they would always give it to you on standby. Now, this was prior to 9-11... I haven't really flown on standby since 9-11, to be honest with you, since before 9-11. Um, so, but yeah, back in the day they used to. I used to be able to fly, shit, dude. I used to fly first class all the time when you get, when you fly standby. Your better half is going to ban me from chat. <laughs> you need to go buy everything at Bucky's. Where's the closest Bucky's though, Reg? Like when I was doing some searching... Like, the closest Bucky's is miles away, dude. Like, miles away. Daisy's going on holiday to the farm while you're back. Uh, she's going to stay with my mom. She's going to stay with my mom and my mom's two dogs, Chloe and Luna. Black Lab and a German Shepherd. Bucky's the land of 140 gas pumps. Yes, it's crazy. I've seen them on, like, travel videos and stuff like that. I'm doing standby to Toronto down to Houston. I might get an upgrade because uh, my mom has business class and first class passes every year. Yeah, that'd be awesome, man. Yeah. It's United. Business is first. Probably will be nice. There you go. There you go. Yeah, ooh, it's United. Mm. 
I don't know if you'll get bumped up. If you were flying, uh, if you were flying your airline, I was going to say you might get bumped. You guys don't have first class, do you? James, what's up, man? I prefer a good steak myself, a Longhorn or Texas Roadhouse. Interesting. I don't... I think for steak, I'm, I'm going to try and stay away from steak because we're going to Fogo de Chao. I don't know if you know about what Fogo de Chao is. If you don't, Google Fogo de Chao and uh, don't do it while you're hungry. But uh, yeah, Fogo de Chao. We're going to Fogo de Chao. We always do Fogo de Chao on Sunday night at the Expos. And I mean, that is literally enough steak for a year that you get there. So, man. Baytown is a local before drag strip meeting spot. Interesting. Brazilian churrasca. Yes. There you go, Leth. Yeah, you know, we don't, but we have agreements with a few airlines that we do get standby business with certain airlines. United, unfortunately, isn't one of them. Got you. <coughs> Pardon me. Tomorrow, I will make Brussels to Los Angeles in the 3.30. Nice. Enjoy, man. I don't know why, but the nose of the E32NX is weird. I agree. It's, um, yeah, the, the modeling, the modeling is not the best. Remember the modeling's from a Sobo. I don't know how they say they can laser modeled it, but it, it does look weird. I do agree. Yeah. Hey, Cam, how do you turn your track IR on and off all the time? Uh, you get a headache from it. So the default button is F9. You can press F9. So now I'm... And if you press F9, that pauses it. Now it doesn't do it. So that's the default command. I have a button set on my joystick as well. I just push a little button on my joystick and that turns it on and off. Yeah. Cat, would you recommend going into debt to buy land? Oh, yeah, you almost have to, right? You get a mortgage, right, Diego? I'm in debt right now. Like, I, the, the land that I bought, I'm, I'm just over a year just over a year into a 25 year mortgage so i have 24 more years of paying off this property so yes going into debt for property is fine especially if you get it at a decent price right united gives no quarter huh um same with the cockpit model yeah the cockpit model seems to be off i do agree yeah do you fly on x Plane 11 anymore i haven't flown on x Plane 11 in probably a year around there so yeah do that Ryanair and smart wings have a small hub in Bratislava very cool can barely maintain uh, land without going into debt yes yeah yeah and you actually never own it well depends Do I use a cloud mod? No, just have my clouds at ultra. Yeah. Will you use x 12? Eventually I'll use x 12. I don't know when. Um, at some point I will. But I just don't know when really. Would you get the 777 V2 and x Plane when it comes out? Uh, we'll see. If I have the PMDG 777 by then, probably not. Um, I think that PMDG will be a far superior product than Flight Factor. Um, so yeah. yeah, I think it really depends which one comes out first, to be honest with you. Can't wait to go down to Houston, then uh, to my home country in the Dominican in August since I haven't uh, been on vacation since 2017. Very cool, man. I love the Dominican, dude. Probably one of my favorite places to go. Jamaica and the Dominican. I think Jamaican and Dominican have the best people, the best culture, the best uh, the best overall travel experience. <coughs> I love all those places, man. Do you have any suggestions on how to butter the 737-700? Fly it into the ground, man. Fly it into the ground, keep the power on. Stop paying your property taxes and see if the government thinks you still own it. Well, I mean, let's not get started on that because we can go down a rabbit hole, Mitchell. The 7.5 comes out before the next CTP. Can we fly it? Uh, the 7.5, maybe. I think it will. 
What pains is the fact that I have thousands of dollars spent in Xbox 11 and now I only fly Microsoft Flight Simulator. Give me my money back. <sighs> yeah, it's one of those unfortunate things, man, where it's, uh, you know, that's why I always tell people, invest wisely, Andre. Invest wisely, man. If you're going to spend money on scenery, if you're going to spend money on airplanes, do your best to do it when things go on sale. Airplanes, I understand, they don't really go on sale all that much. If you want to, you know, if you want to fly a high fidelity A320 or 737 or 777 or 787 or Q400 or whatever, you're going to have to spend money on it. Um, but scenery, scenery goes on sale all the time. Even new scenery. New scenery will come out and there will be some major sale, you know, 4th of July or some type of sale. I think that's going to be the next big sale. It's probably 4th of July sale. Um, but yeah. Which would clouds to look at? I mean... The ortho down there is pretty damn nice as well, but I do agree. There's going to probably be no clouds, to be honest with you. But the ortho down there is nice, at least. I've been uh, pleasantly surprised by all of the ortho thus far. It's been looking good. Is the Salty 7.4 any good? I mean, I guess it depends to what you're... In what aspect you're asking, Savage. If you're used to flying high-fidelity good airplanes, no. It's not the best. If you're not really used to flying high fidelity airplanes and you just want to fly it to enjoy it, probably does the trick. But yeah. PMDG still has the 737 on a 5% discount. Well, it's always been, Dan. It's not, it's it's a marketing technique, if you will, Dan. It's, it's to make it look like, oh, I can save an extra $5 if I buy it right now, right? It's always been priced like that. They've always had the sale or discount or whatever it is. For some reason, the ortho down there in my sim isn't as sharp and high res as what you're flying over the U.S. Um, I don't know. Might have been a little bit higher res up in California, but it still looks pretty good for me. Evening, Captain. How are you doing? I have a question for you in chat. I hope you're able to help me. I was wondering how you can have all these fabulous custom views in your aircraft in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Uh, so mid, if you're on PC... Google or YouTube custom wing views Microsoft Flight Simulator and that should explain everything that you're doing Basically, you need to unlock a camera once you unlock a camera the view that you're looking at right there is this view Right. I just have my wing view and all I've done is I've taken the camera Because I've unlocked the camera I'm able to actually move the camera system back to create this view right here, right? Um, there's a bunch of great videos out there XP 72 good friend of the channel Kirk he has uh, he has a video up on how to do it it's very simple you need to edit one file in a camera config and once you do that it basically moves the camera from outside of the cockpit to outside the airplane from the inside of the cockpit to the outside and then you can manipulate your camera and you can do whatever you want you can set whatever wing view you want left right behind the wing here you know you can set all these crazy custom views and stuff so that's how that works. And trust me, it's a lot easier watching a video on how to do it than actually me trying to explain how you do it. Pa, how are you, man? Good to see you, dude. Just noticed the airplane's name is the same as my sister's. There you go. thing that gets me about the Salty is the wings when it's airborne. Yeah, it's it's weird. It's weird. Cap, you've got to have some Texas barbecue. I recommend ribs or especially brisket with a good Texas barbecue sauce. Yes. Oh, James, do not you worry, my friend. I will be having... The difficult thing is going to be not going for barbecue more than once. Because I have a funny feeling... I have a funny feeling Wednesday night, Dan, Flyboy, Maverick, and myself are probably going to want to go for barbecue. Maybe we'll do that. We'll see. We'll see what we'll see what Dan and Flyboy are thinking once we pick them up. Once they get, once they get there. Um, but yeah, I'm thinking... I'm thinking barbecue at least twice. I don't know, it's going to be difficult to not do it twice. Plus, you'll be outside not of the sound of being outside the airplane. Yes, it's true too. Like the pink engines? Valeris. Eleven months, my man. One month away from getting that one-year badge. AJ, thanks for support, dude. Appreciate you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, my friend. I could eat barbecue probably every day. Oh, absolutely, Flyboy. Absolutely. The only thing is, is I want to leave. I want to leave it open for for a few other. Um, you know, there there was talks one night we wanted to go for. Uh, 
I think Schmitty wants to go for a nice seafood dinner one night, which I'm totally down for as well. Go down to Galveston or somewhere down there, you know what I mean? Get a nice fresh, mmm, something good. I also want to go for a Mexican spot, you know? Need to get some Tex-Mex or like some proper Mexican. Um, well, yeah. I hear the whistle, but I can't go. I'm going to take her down to Mexico. She said, oh no, Guadalajara won't do well. I did not think the girl could be so cruel and I'm never going back to my old school. Huge no floaties to you, C2A. Thank you very much for support, my friend. I appreciate you, Guadalajara. Thank you, man. Appreciate you, dude. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Bratislava is a beautiful and capital city of Slovakia. It is, yes. I think we've flown in there before. Yes. Thank you, as always, C2A. Howdy, Captain. Did San Jose to MMGL today early morning? It was quite a windy landing. Nice. The winds, uh, when we checked earlier, there was absolutely no winds. So hopefully the uh, winds have kind of stayed that way. We'll see how everything's looking now. Clement, how are you, my friend? Welcome back, dude. Hope you're doing well. The winds are 320 at 7. 8 mile visibility scattered at 30,000. Not bad at all. Scattered clouds at 30,000. That's crazy. You did around 2 a.m. Oh, yeah, okay. Gotcha. I'm right now on a flight from ENBR to EHIM. Fingers crossed, EHIM Center comes online. Nice. Making some Mr. Noodles because I got no groceries. Uh, gonna get some later. Nice. I'm. I forget what I'm having. I think I'm having a chicklet, chicken, chicken cutlet in tomato basil sauce. I think it is. I'm telling you, dude. This diet is. Uh, it's been interesting, chat. It's been an extremely interesting challenge. You know, when I would make myself meals, I would make like. It's just like the portions are just insane. <laughs> it's taken some, uh, it's really taken some getting used to. But it's also good because I think it's really teaching me portion control and like understanding that I don't have to eat till I'm ready to explode every single time I eat. I think, again, that was kind of the problem, man. I blame the weed chat really at the end of the day. I, I, as much as I love the medicine and I respect the medicine, Fuck, dude. It makes it so I have, like, no control. Like, it makes it so I literally just have, like, a bottomless pit. I can just eat and eat and eat and eat and eat and eat for days. And it would be no problem. But he can't do that. Especially now that I'm getting a little bit older. You know? I can't eat the way I used to ten years ago. Dude, I could eat, I could eat whatever the hell I want to do ten years ago. I wouldn't gain a pound. It's crazy, man. Made jalapeno breakfast sausage sandwich with eggs? That sounds delicious. Just look at the simware and I see you have some followers behind you. Yeah, there should be a couple in front as well. A couple in front, a couple behind. I think there was like six of us, six or seven of us going down today. I'm just writing you because I'm from Slovakia. Would you like Bratislava with Ryanair? Uh, maybe. Yeah, Marcos, we'll see, man. I don't know when I can make that happen, but yeah. Metabolism's a bitch. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Flyboy. Get you, man. Catches up to you, dude. Ha, <laughs> wrench. I'm hitting you right when you're high, your stomach is an iron boiler. Y exactly, yes. Yeah, I can just eat and eat and eat and eat, man. Do you already know what you're planning for next week? Um, no. No, I would guess maybe some Logan Air and maybe some Binter, some Binter Ops down in the Canaries maybe. We were talking about that last week when we flew in down to the Canaries, Grand Canaria. Uh, we'll see, man. We'll see how the week treats us. I can see you've lost some weight. I have the opposite problem. I'm trying to fix it, and I can see that you're trying your best. Absolutely, man. Got to go for it, dude. Got to go for it. I don't know if you can see anything yet. I've only lost 8 pounds, close to 10 pounds, but maybe, but I don't know. 
Not that it's any of my business, but do you see yourself lowering your weed intake to reduce the munchies? No. I'm actually smoking more, Kevin. <laughs> Fuck, dude. I'm, it's, it's having the complete opposite, man. I'm like sitting there at night and I'm hungry and I'm like, I'm gonna smoke a joint, take my mind off of it. That's... <laughs> Yeah, I, I've literally been smoking more. <laughs> How do you like Indian food? One of my favorites, dude. One of my favorites. I absolutely love Indian food. Like, it's just... Man, when I was in when I was in Vancouver, Sanjay, uh, Kevin actually sent me to a really, pl really good place called... Uh, what is it? Little Indian Bistro or Tiny Indian Bistro? I think it's Little Indian Bistro. Oh my god, dude. This was the best Indian food I've ever had in my life. Just, wow. I love Indian food, man. Onion bhaji, chicken karma, korma, korma. Um, tasty Indian bistro, man. Dude. When I go back to Vancouver, I am butter chicken with garlic naan, dude. Vindaloo, like, oh, man. Mmm. Mm, mm, mm. I could eat all of that right now. All of it. <clears throat> I'm always pre-coitus. Lamb Vindaloo, dude. So good. And this time you're going, we're going together? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely, man. So good, dude. So good. Garlic naan. Even just regular naan, man. Naan in general is so good. The way the layers are, it's so light, it's so fluffy. But yeah, you, I could just eat, I could just sit there and eat garlic naan, to be honest with you. Like, it's just delicious. Good Indian food? Man, Reg, you'll, you'll never turn back, man. If Once you have good Indian food, you just, you realize what you've been missing, and it's just... It's incredible, man. I was trying to explain it to my fiance. We have a lot of good Indian restaurants here, but nothing compares to when, when I had it in Vancouver. And I was trying to explain it to her. Like, we have this one place that we go to. I don't mind it. It's not the best. It's not the worst. Um, but, again, like, now that I've had... Now that I've had proper, really good Indian food... My God, dude. It's... It makes it hard to go back to the ones we have here because it's just, it's not even in the same ballpark. It's not even in the same, on the same level. It's just, I feel like I'm wasting money. And Indian food is extremely expensive as well. So because of all the spices that are used and the care that comes into the food, it's, you know, it's, mm, it's delicious, man. Do I like Greek food? Love Greek food. Yes. Yeah. One of my favorite is like souvlaki, pork souvlaki, chicken souvlaki. Uh, Greek salads, like proper Greek salads with all the veggies and feta cheese and mm, tzatziki sauce. Tzatziki sauce is like almost, that may be the best sauce ever. Like it is absolute gold tier sauce. Some of the highest tiered sauce. You're half Greek? Damn. Same with Malaysian food, probably all Asian food. Man, I love it dude. Yeah. The spices of good Indian food, it's unmatched man in my opinion. Unmatched. Like a good curry man wow the only other thing that I can think that I may like it just as much is like Thai curry Thai curry to me is also incredible Thai curry when it's cooked with um, coconut milk and stuff oh boy get a nice green Thai curry a little bit spicy a little bit sweet oh buddy it's unreal man Indian food is probably going to be like when I finally uh, got the Beatles yep had pork sovaki today it was great nice do you like butter chicken? Absolutely. Yeah. Having some Indian curry right now? Lucky, man. A good pistachio is delicious. Baklava or a good gyro? Yeah, absolutely, man. All of the above, please. All of the above. Hey, Cap Curly, I'm about to heading to MCO uh, on the lonely 122.8. It's okay. We're on Unicom as well. We're doing good. Good to have you, Snaps. Do you like Turkish food? Absolutely. Yep. I'm a man of food. I'm a man of food. I didn't get to 270 pounds by not eating food. <laughs> I love food, dude. Euro, what's up, man? Quick flight? Ah! 
know how long until Top of Descent. Top of Descent is in 607 miles. I think we still have that tailwind, kind of, yeah. Nice little quartering tailwind right now. 502 knots on the ground. Good. We're about an hour and 10 minutes from descent, chat. Not bad. We're actually making really good time. How long have we been airborne? An hour and 38? Yeah, we're making really good time, actually. Like, really good time. I'm wondering if we're going to run into, like, a headwind or something coming up. Move my Airbus TCA throttle onto the Boeing throttle mount. So much better than the original TM mounts. Um... You can tell him to offer those uh, for sale, please. <laughs> he fell asleep. Oof. Plan on going to India in the next year or so. Want to eat stuff straight off the pans in the ovens? Ah, oh, dude. You're lucky, man. Do it. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, dude. Now, Kevin, would you... is Could you get flight, like... Could you get deals on flights because you work for an airline? MMGL is the final destination? It is, yes. For today... Tomorrow, we're going over to Monterey in Mexico City. Nah, no, you're good, Strody, dude. You're good, man. Just be careful what you eat, right? But I've always seen awesome quality and... Yeah. Sleep meditation, nice. United 320 Ops? Uh, I don't know when, Will. Maybe. The Food World Tour? <sighs> Man vs. Food, Captain Canada Edition. I can get you a percentage off the fare, but the fees and taxes make up most of the tickets. C2A donations are worth more. Found a great real world ETR route for next week. Sky Express Corfu Athens Roads. Yes. Yes to all of that, Ben. Absolutely. Ben, can you put that in the Discord if you're in the Discord? Just so I can remember that. You can travel on other airlines. That's how I booked the United for the Expo. If I go to India, it'll be Etihad, Air France, or Lufthansa. All of which I can fly standby on. Fuck. Can you take me with you, dude? I seriously mean that, Kevin. I'm like, are you going by yourself or are you going with, with the girl? If you're going by yourself... I, I, hell, dude, I'll third wheel, man. No problem. Let's make it happen. Let's do it. <laughs> Never know anyone who's going to India for the first few days to have their stomachs destroyed. Well, I guess it depends where you're, you know, where you're coming from. And, like, if you don't, if you're not, like, if you don't eat that food and stuff, man, you know, I, I could see it for sure. When you got time, man, my uncle flies E320s for United. Just thought it'd be cool. Well, we've definitely flown United 320s, Will. Like, there's tons of stuff up on the channel. Um, but yeah, where are we flying over right now? This is pretty cool. We are way down here, chat. We're way in Mexico now. What's this? This is Her Hermosillo. Hermosillo. I have an airport. We just flew over it. Hermosillo. Cool little city. Every time I've flown in the sim here lately, uh, I am see most of the way. Uh, I've got clear weather. Come fly west coast, man. Always sunny down here. Saw KLM Ops today. Nice. Man, I can eat a ham sandwich and have my stomach destroyed nowadays. What? Really? I had, uh, for my cheat meal last week, I had Pizza Hut. And I don't want to explain to you what Pizza Hut did to me at 4 o'clock in the morning. But, uh, yeah. It was not fun. And that's one thing that I'm learning. Now that I'm eating so healthy and so clean... That when I do have my cheat meal once a week, it's uh, it usually absolutely destroys me. I got a, a personal pan pizza. It's like that big with five boneless bites. <sighs> Dude. Destroyed me at like four o'clock in the morning. Like one of those fast asleep, roll over, wake up like, uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, it was not good, dude. It was not good. I don't understand my body at all. <laughs> oh, man. Let me guess. Your intestines were liquid? One way of putting it. Yep. Yep. That's Pizza Hut in a nutshell? I guess. I don't know, man. I've never really had any issues. I love Pizza Hut, man. Pizza Hut and Pizza Hut slaps. Mushroom, pepperoni, green pepper. 
personal pizza with five boneless honey barbecue bites. Oof. Glad you're at the condo. Yes, exactly. Why'd you eat pizza at four in the morning? No, I didn't at four. That's when I felt the effects of the pizza that I ate at like seven o'clock, eight o'clock at night. I felt the effects of that pizza at four in the morning. <coughs> Absolutely destroying my stomach. Mr. Dan Barry. Pizza Hut, uh, I've been listening for the last hour. <laughs> Gamer, how are you, my man? Good to see you, dude. Pizza Hut's good, man. Burger King? Yeah, Burger King can do that. Fresh margarita pizza is legit. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Drink water, water? Dude, that's all I drink. I drink, uh, what, at, at least a gallon of water a day. It's a crazy amount, dude. You used to go to Pizza Hut for the lunch buffet when we had lunch and spare back-to-back? Uh, -back. Yes, absolutely less. The best, man. They don't they don't offer that anymore, man. There's really no Pizza Huts that offer the buffet anymore. The buffet was the best, dude. Man. The dessert pizza? What PC do you use and how much did it cost? Rourke, exclamation point specs. And uh, I believe when I bought it, I don't know, when I built it and put everything together, it was... Close to five thousand dollars, forty-seven hundred dollars, five thousand, somewhere around there. Now we killed that off. They hated that. Hated us. Yeah. Or a falafel. Falafels are great. Yeah. Y'all remember when CC's was a dollar ninety-nine? All you can eat pizza? No. <laughs> that sounds proper American, though. Look at this highway that just runs through here. It's one straight highway. Veggie food definitely buy uh, the best. Yeah. My neighborhood CC's was $1.99 all you can eat pizza and Tekken 2 on arcade. See, those were the days, though, man. Those were the days. Feel like getting Domino's right now? Domino's. I'm gonna have Domino's in forever. You run 1440p on your 4080 and you get 70 FPS in LAX with a Phoenix. Damn. Nice, dude. Must be nice, man. I'll be there eventually. McDonald's is worse than ever know uh, what processed food you're gonna get there. At least you know their chicken is real. Ooh, no. Everything is. Yeah. Why must these streams make me hungry? Because we sit here and we talk about food for an hour and a half, Mopar. We're all fatties. That's what I've learned, Mobar. There's nothing wrong with it. <laughs> Your brother always gets pizza pizza? I don't like pizza pizza, man. No, pizza pizza had its place, but now now that I'm older and I just see how fake pizza pizza is, it's, yeah, it's depressing. Just aside, was driving up to La Plata the other day in Pizza Hut in uh, Macon, I think. Had a big sign out saying the buffet is back. Ooh. Hashtag boomer, hashtag kept, hashtag driving. No, Schmidt, you gotta go pull over there, man. Go to the buffet one day, get some uh, get some good stuff. Good to see you, Schmitty. Happy Sunday. Pizza pizza is when you're smashed at 2 a.m. That's the only acceptable time less. <laughs> or if you're 16 and in high school and you wanna go like back in the day, it was like a $2 slice or something. Two ninety nine for a slice back in the day in high school, or a dollar ninety nine. We used to have one right around the corner from my high school. That was the only place. <clears throat> the only time. Oh hell no! I don't want uh, rumbling guts at four in the morning. <laughs> Every day is Sunday for Schmitters. Huh. Maybe. 
Committee's got all of our hats looking all nice down there. There was a hibachi place uh, in the small New Mary. Went there once. I forgot how it was. Hibachi's amazing. Love hibachi. Tepon, hibachi, all that stuff. Really good, man. What hats? You sold them on the gray market, right, Schmini? Now it's like nine bucks for two slices. I wouldn't doubt it. I wouldn't doubt it, man. I wouldn't doubt it. Need some eBay practice. They're useless on eBay, Schmini. They're worth less because it's got my name on it. I knew the world has gone to an end when two tacos stopped being 99 cents at Jack and the Crack. Oh, man. Oh, dude. Schmitty, everybody's saying we got to go to Jack in the Box in, uh, in Houston. They're saying it's the best fast food around. What's your take on that? <laughs> Chat. Shh, shh. Belgian Flights and Pilot, what's up, man? Good to see you, dude. Plot twist when he smells them on eBay. Hard or soft shell tacos? Depends where and depends what. Most of the time I'm going soft, but I'm not opposed to, to, a, to a hard shell every now and then. Yeah. Ideally, you can go like hard shell wrapped with soft. A hard shell, cheese on the soft shell, and then wrapped. Oh, man. Here we're all, we're talking about food and he's on a diet. Yes, I'm getting myself ready for lunch. I keep looking at the clock. I'm putting off my lunch as long as I can. Corn or flour? Gotta go corn, man. I mean, I don't mind a flour tortilla, but corn all day long. Never had Taco Bell in your life? It's good. This is as bad as the crunchier smooth argument with the harder soft tacos. Mm, I feel like more people are going to go with soft shell tacos. Soft tacos. Also, you can also crush way more soft tacos. Jack in the Box? Well, no. Just remember uh, who used to own them. Ralston Purina. Probably still using the leftover dog food recipe for the tacos and maybe the burgers. <laughs> Did Purina really used to own Jack in the Box? That's actually kind of crazy. <laughs> I wonder if the, the dog food plant, the burger plant, were right beside each other. Crunchy is for lunatics, Dan. End of story. No, man. Crunchy peanut butter is so good. Like, so good. It offers so much, like, texture. Yeah, that's crazy, Schmitty. Cheesy Gordita Crunch from Taco Bell. If <laughs> you big boy knows. <laughs> nice. Not a big fan of Pizza Pizza. Mandarin Canada is the best. Mandarin's good, Oscar. Yeah, I've been to Mandarin. You got to go to Mandarin with an appetite, though, dude. Because that is an expensive buffet. Last time I went there, what was it? It was 30, 34 or thirty six ninety nine per person for a buffet. It was over 40. Oh, it was almost $50 with tax on a drink. I know that. Tax on a drink and tip, it was about 50 bucks per person. Because you're a lunatic. See? Makes sense. <laughs> oh, man. I'm mad they closed the 7-Eleven by you. You want your, your snacks. Phoenix leaked easy. What? Listen, with your medicine stuff, Jack is usually open 24 hours. You can get two tacos and for a couple of bucks. Nah. It's not even worth it, Schmitty. I'd rather, I'd rather take my chances, go up to Sonic and get like a loaded hot dog or something. <laughs> Euro Aviation, thanks so much, man, for the 279. Appreciate you, dudes. It's the best airline you have ever eaten on. Uh, I, listen, dude, I fly a lot of domestic flights within Canada. I don't think we can really, like, they, these, the Canadian airlines don't hold a torch to some of the big, you know, Lufthansa, Etihad, you know, all those guys. It's not even close, so, yeah. I don't understand what you're saying. Phoenix leaked easy. Phoenix in access. It's free. Are you talking about a website that you can download the Phoenix for free? Because if you are, you're going to get your one and only warning. Please don't talk about pirating projects here on my streams. Okay, thank you very much. Better idea is to find a good lunch truck and get those street tacos. Ooh. I bet there's going to be a lot of those too, right, Schmitty? I hope. BK Tacos? No. Smooth peanut butter all the way. Crunchy is just not it. No, dude. Crunchy, man. Yeah, it's expen it is expensive, man, for sure. Plenty of them out there? Okay. Best airline food I had was on Cathay Pacific and Air India, hands down. Yeah, no, I agree, dude. 
the Canadian airlines don't do it. Like, you get, like, not that the food that I had on my flight was bad or anything like that. Like, the the, the breakfast that Schmidty and I had on our flight from Toronto to, to Calgary in, the, in WestJet's first class was... It was good. It was a nice breakfast, uh, nice English breakfast, eggs, yogurt, uh, s- some uh, grilled grilled tomatoes. It was fine, but it wasn't anything to like write home about. Definitely not like you know, oh my god, you have to fly this airline to try this food. Yeah, I think more international carriers. I think they they definitely hit it out of the park. I'll just take the salted peanuts over peanut butter. Crazy mountain down below, mountain. Pretty sure the Phoenix can't be cracked because of the Phoenix app. I would agree with you. But who knows? I don't know what he was talking about. It's kind of gibberish. Turkish Airlines has great food, or at least they used to. Not sure about now. Hmm. What's your favorite airline to fly on? Um, I really don't have a choice, to be honest with you. Um, WestJet and Air Canada are usually the two airlines that I would choose just because they're the main line operators here in Canada. Um... I usually fly with whoever gets me from point A to point B the fastest. Yeah. By Mule, you aren't talking about the state uh, of the Sky Waitress. No, no, no. That's C2A's job. (coughs) Did years airline catering, you eat a lot. There you go. Crunchy peanut butter is delicious. I agree. Yes. PMDG or fly-by-wire? Definitely going PMDG. Not going to lie, Delta economy feels like business class a bit since you get an amenity kit uh, and good food. You don't usually get amenity kits in economy. I would agree. Yeah. Singapore is the best, if I'm not correct. Could be. Could be, yeah. Gap, you ever fly southwest the moment you touch down, the plane breaks violently? That's, I find, all 737s, man. I find the same thing with West Jets. Like, you fly West Jet, they land in their 7-3, you literally get, like, flown forward. Chat, I'm not even going to try and pronounce that. Obregon? Obregon. Ciudad Obregon. Probably absolutely butchered that, Schmitty, don't get mad. Um, Nice city there down there. Nice airport. Pretty big airport, actually. Right on the coast. Coastal city. Okay, if you ever fly Southwest... Oh, sorry, I got that one. Uh, in your opinion, would you prefer flying more West Jet or Canada? They're both great, man. I honestly don't have a... It really doesn't matter. They're both fine. Maybe Air Canada, because they have a much wider variety of airplanes to fly on as an av geek that like tries to like almost purposely get certain flights on certain I would say maybe um but uh yeah it really doesn't matter to me is this San Diego uh no we're in the middle of Mexico we are far down Mexico San Diego is all the way up here we are all the way down here. We're about just over halfway, actually, I would say. Yeah, maybe the final just before two-thirds. We are all the way down here. We're deep into Mexico. Deep, deep. <laughs> Schmitty. You're just annoying, Schmitty. Got you. I'm going to try out Porter's E2s from Calgary to Toronto next summer on my way to Sydney, Nova Scotia. Nice. Very cool. I saw that they have a porta potty on the top of the new porter hanger at YOW. Nice. That means they're putting up the roof. They're putting up the roof. Going to Hawaii from JFK in August on the triple seven first class. Nice. That'll be great, dude. Enjoy that. You have a friend that says she flies on Spirit. Nothing wrong with Spirit, man. Like I said, get the job done. Nice price. Jack, what's up, man? Good to see you, dude. About to reach your top of the set, MC, uh, MCO. Wish Miami Center was online. Ah, it's Sunday, man. Can we do silver ops with the ATR? Yes, absolutely, Tyler, for sure. 
There's another thing about Canadian aviation, just saw 7.3s, 8.320s, 777s, and 787s. So boring to see the same planes again and again and again. Yeah, no, you're not wrong, man. You're not wrong. It's cool that we're getting some, you know, Porter's got the Embraer V2s out now, E2s. It's good to see Air Canada with the E220s and some of the other new planes, but yeah. If you were a pilot cap IRL and you had the option to fly any aircraft, which one would you pick? Probably one of the newer modern ones, 787, 350, E220, something like that. One of the modern ones, maybe a Max. Going on Air Canada for the first time in Houston normally when I go on vacay, I fly Sunwing. Yep. Yeah. Just order Domino's. Yeah, it's uh, it's 2.30 chat. I am absolutely starving. I'm going to go get my lunch ready. Bear with me here for a couple minutes. I will be right back. I'll turn the tunes up a little bit more.
It's already done, Dan. I'm eating my trail mix. You want to see what 50 grams of trail mix looks like? Dried blueberries, almonds, walnuts, um, cranberries, pumpkin seeds, and something else. my life consists of that's what my life consists of now that's not very much yeah that's what happens when you're dieting not even been two weeks and I'm already seeing the benefits. How long am I on the diet? I'm aiming for three or four months.
All right. Thanks, guys. I feel much better now. Can have a quick little stretch before we start our descent, though. Stretch it out. Um, right, Doug, it's, it's, um... So as you know, I've been kind of like meal prepping and I've been trying to lose, like, weight just really hasn't been working and it, so I, um, I went to a dietitian. as weird as it is to say that. I went to a dietitian to try and figure out why I wasn't losing more weight than I was and why it was such a slow process and, um... So anyways, I'm on like a very strict, like, portion control diet right now. You know, like, um... 400 calorie meals and not eating past 9 p.m. at night um, you know things like that and it's really 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 helping as difficult as it is hey Gap how do you stop the catering trucks from going to the same door um I don't know in GSX so you can have one burnt end and five broccolis exactly Poor housekeeping is damn right, Schmitty. I'm gonna absolutely destroy that toilet in Houston. Yep. How much do memberships cost? A uh, dollar ninety-nine and four ninety-nine. Chad, how much longer till top of descent? We having some bets? Hotel paper is a little thin and rough. Might have to stop at Walmart. 100%, Schmitty. Yes. Need to stop at Walmart. Need to get some gold bond or some baby powder. If you know, you know. <coughs> um, definitely get my own. Definitely get some water. Gonna need a whole lot of water. Some fruits and veggies. And, uh some snackies, some barbecue Fritos, some honey barbecue Fritos. You know, toilet paper with aloe vera. <laughs> Not a bad idea. I saw that R6. That's pretty crazy, man. Pretty damn crazy, dude. Speaking of destroying a toilet, I'm thinking about, uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Double tree is warm cookies at the desk. Do they really? Interesting. How much weight am I looking to lose? Um, I've given myself a goal of 30 to 40 pounds, Gerardo. 30 to 40 pounds is my goal. I, I, hell, dude, I would even lose 60 pounds. Put me back into like when I was high school. 6'3", 210 pounds. 
200 pounds, 6'3", that'd be pretty crazy, man. Am I going to share a room with somebody? No. No. I get put in the big boy room, Diego. Thrustmaster got me a suite. Whew, thank you, Thrustmaster. Lost 90 pounds with intermittent fasting and light cardio. Damn, very cool, man. Congratulations. That's incredible, dude. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm 270 pounds, 6'3", 270 right now. Um, I'd like to be 210, 220. I've kind of always been around 210, 220. So, yeah. R6, you imagine, dude. Wait, it is, isn't it? American Aviator is sharing the suite with me? You're right. Um, I think it is today. Schmidt, is it your birthday today? I think it is. Ladies and gentlemen, can we please get a big happy birthday in chat for the best boomer we know? <laughs> Some uh, huge no floaties and happy birthdays in chat for Mr. Schmitty. Sing like Marilyn Monroe. What city are we flying over? Good question. Um, this is... I'm not going to try and pronounce it. Kulikyan. Kulishan. Pretty big city, though. Are you getting a nice uh, birthday meal tonight, Schmitty? You making yourself a nice steak on the grill? Going out with some spotting friends? Steak dinner tonight? Atta boy. <laughs> uh, Dan, I was like, you know what? You gotta try, right? You gotta try at some point. Are we still, like, right by the coast? We are, man. Like, all these cities are right by the coast. It's beautiful, dude. That'd be so badass, man. Little peninsulas and stuff out here. Mexico's a beautiful country, man. I rather think Mexico gets a bad rap, obviously, for obvious reasons, but. Chill, Mo. We don't care, man. Stop. Coastal cities are nice. I mean, almost every city we've flown over in coastal. Huh. 
Huh. Very cool R6. It's Sinaloa headquarters? Jesus. Jordan, what's up, man? Good to see you, dude. Doink, what's up, man? Good to see you, dude. Welcome back. Please, this is San Diego. Don't attempt pronouncing Latin names in Houston. Don't want any troubles with the locals. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Correct. I'll let you. I'll let you do all the pronunciations. I mean, literally, like it's November 22. The cartel was shooting planes and having gunfights with police in the streets and kidnapping people because the son El Chapo was arrested. Jesus. Verisop proposes you to showcase the 330. Will you accept? Yes. I'm pretty sure they will, Diego. Fingers crossed. I do have my contacts at. Uh, at Aerosoft. I'll actually send them an email, Diego, tomorrow. Just to confirm. Didn't Valeris go bankrupt? Mm, I don't think so. They're still flying. Top of descent is in 227 miles. Oh, we still got lots of time, but we like because it's switched to like a. No, well, we're still getting a quartering tailwind, 501 knots on the ground. Seven months chat 67 months happy five years and seven months not sure what the purpose of these milestone chats are though no floaties guys we had some blame dance in chat the one and only mr daniel barry the man that literally makes everything happen behind the scenes from the discord to the bot commands to everything else in between mr daniel barry let's get some lovely blame dance in chat daniel thank you for 67 months my goodness. That's that's first day, Dan. That's first day that we would have got memberships active. You became a member on the very first day. So there you go, chat. I reached a milestone of being able to have members five years and seven months ago is when I first activated memberships on the channel. Pretty crazy. Pretty crazy, man. Thank you very much, Mr. Daniel Berry. Hey, Jay, what's up, man? Welcome back, dude. Happy Sunday to you. Hope you've had a great weekend. We are in the middle of... Uh, actually, I guess we're getting towards the end. The home stretch here of uh, our flight from Sacramento down to Guadalajara. The real world um, Valeris Ops. And then tomorrow we're going to be going from Guadalajara up to Monterey which is somewhere up here, somewhere up here, Monterey, somewhere, there it is, Monterey, MMMY, and then we're going to be going from Monterey down to Mexico City, which is uh, right here, MMMX, the cool ass approach through Mexico, you fly along the high altitude, such a cool ass approach, man, I'm excited for tomorrow chat, hopefully landing on the fives. Because that approach in, it's like an RNAV approach. Because there's a mountain range right here. 
So basically fly to the mountain range and then down like that on an RNAV approach. It's beautiful. We've done it once. Hopefully we get that tomorrow. That is the plan. SMF scenery good? I, uh, it's okay, Diego. I think I gave it a six and a half, seven out of my rating. So it's, you know, it could be much better. It's not bad. I think it's one of those sceneries that you can get on sale. I wouldn't pay full price for it. I don't think it's worth full price. I think I mentioned that in my last video that I flew in and out of it. It's a good scenery to have, but I don't think at full price. Yeah. Cap, isn't Guadalajara like unbelievably high in elevation? Um, I think so. But I'm honestly not too sure. Let's see. Airport elevation, 5,000 feet. So it's like Denver. It's basically like Denver, 5,000 feet. I think Mexico City's even uh, even higher. MMMX, Mexico City. Um, what's Mexico? Yeah, Mexico City, 7,300 feet. Pfft. That's crazy, dude. 7,300 feet. Wild. Why old? You guys, it's been quite a while since I have uh, checked your streams. Days have been quite hectic recently. Aviationist, good to have you back. Thanks for being here, man. Welcome, welcome. I've used to use the test of VNAV, quick flight MMO to MMX, still uh, 40 minutes to go with VNAV, departure and arrival. There you go. That city is crazy. Mexico City is 23 million people. Dude, it's, it's wild, man. I'd be out of breath just standing up. <laughs> Kev, if you're the fly-by-wire, what price tag would you put on this beauty? Fly-by-wire price tag? Oh, I don't know, man. Probably somewhere like around the Phoenix or something, you know, $40, $50. Yeah, I agree, Trey. I don't, uh, you know, I wish I understood the pricing. Some of these, some of the developers decide to price their products, but hey. Symphonatic, what's up, man? Good to see you back. I'm doing well. How are you? Forty-three hours till the ATR. Man, we're counting down like that? Oh, baby. Do we know what time it's releasing? Have they said what time? Is this the experimental? It is, AJ, yeah. That's the only way to get top of, top of climb and top of descent and stuff, you know. Noon, okay. Noon Pacific, noon Eastern. It's always noon, okay. <laughs> 44 hours till my first ATR crash. <laughs> oh boy. noon eastern so 9 a.m pacific okay uh comes out on tuesday florida wings but yes so after tomorrow tomorrow is our last stream in the a3 2nx and then the next stream that you see me in will be the atr yeah cap did you feel tremors from an earthquake earlier uh no was there an earthquake here? There was one like a week or two ago as well. First thing I'll do is some uh, practice circus around FSM Studios Toronto City Center. There you go. Yeah. You ever tried Cabaret Mini Eggs? I smoke weed, man. Absolutely. There was a 3.6 earthquake in Adams, New York. Shook your place. Huh. Interesting. Mm. 
Not sure, Aired. Cap, can you check out SPZO altitude? SPZO. Jesus. Airport elevation 10,860. What airport is this, dude? This is insane. Where is this? We gotta try and fly into here one day, chat. How long is the runway? 11,000 foot runway. It's in Peru. What do they fly into here? Is this like commercial? I think it's badass, dude. Could be crazy. Look at that place. Like, you can't even fly out of it this way because it's all mountains. Like, what do you do on a go around? Circle. You've gone into the into their IRL. What the hell? Cusco, Peru. Cusco. Damn, dude. That's crazy. On vacation. Damn. Latam operates A320 CEOs and Neos into there. Wow. Is there scenery for it, chat? The world's highest Irish bar is there. Were you out of breath less? Like, just walking? Like, 11... Like, it's 11,000 feet, man. Like, that must take some acclimation, no? There is scenery, Aerosoft, huh? Yes, Peru, the only place where there is always flaky snowstorms, even in July, if you know what I mean. I think I know what you mean. Cusco is close to Machu Picchu. Ah, Machu Picchu. Damn, that's crazy, dude. It's tiring, no kidding. You should do Skardu Pakistan, takes like two to three circles to land. Some crazy approaches out there, man. There are some crazy approaches. People eat coca leaves? Got you. Wait, wasn't, uh, who watches Kirk Kaz? Anybody watch Kirk Kaz? What does ops mean? Operations. So real world flights, real call signs, real airplane, real airports. 15,000 foot elevation. That's crazy, man. Wasn't he just in, like, Peru? He was up here somewhere? Pretty sure he was up here somewhere. Fun fact, uh, Cusco's the first paper scenery I ever purchased in Flight Sim FSX. Interesting days. Very cool. When are you back in the Phoenix? Uh, I'm not sure. ETR for the next couple weeks. ETR is coming, so. Bogota. I thought he was in Peru somewhere. Maybe that was, like, last year. Maybe not recently he wasn't in Peru, but I think he was there. Because remember, he was... He tried to get the, um, he tried to get the, the, the honey weed, the honey, not weed, the, um, the hallucinogenic honey that the bees make up in the, I think that was Nepal, right? ETR New Zealand Ops? Yes, of course. He was in Ecuador, Venezuela, now Colombia, got you. Always, dude. He shines at it, R6. He always, every place he goes, don't put your camera. Don't show your camera. It's like, where? This way? Okay, I'm going this way. 
you have any plans for some Aer Lingus regional ops? Yes, Harry, when the ETR comes out, absolutely. Yeah. He hired a cameraman as well that comes uh, with him now. See, there you go. Take care, Flyboy. Have a great day, man. Hopefully, I will see you tomorrow if you're not busy, man. We'll see you around. I must say, I do find x 12 absolutely atrocious. <laughs> hey, man, everybody is entitled to an opinion. I know that you're not alone. Nelson, what's up, man? Good to see you, dude. But let's not start debates in chat, man. You use whatever simulator you think is right for you. There's no rights and there's no wrongs. That's what I've learned. Nobody should be able to tell you what is right for what you want to use. So you use whatever simulator you want to use. Can't wait to see the new update in Hawaii. Heard they're making Kona International. I think it's the only big uh, new airport for there. Nice, that'd be cool. Is there a 747-400 in the sim? I think there's a mod for one Ikea. There's not one natively though. No, I don't think so. Might be a mod, but I don't, I don't think so actually. I know PMDG is making one. Yeah, I saw that R6. I watched that the other day. Looks pretty intense, man. I wouldn't even break it down like that, X11, to be honest with you, man. It's a simulator, dude. You're never, you're never, ever, ever, ever going to get, you know, the, the realistic controls or what it feels like to fly. I think that they're... They, I don't necessarily think those are the only two reasons that they cater for different different things. Um, but at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter, man. They're, they're completely different, you know, they're completely different simulators for completely different people. And I, I think both have their, both have their perks, both have their ups, both have their downs. You know what I mean? The A220 stream, uh, will come tomorrow. A220? No, it happened yesterday. Mr. Codbeast, you missed it, but it's up on their channel and we watched it as well. I mean, I don't, Tuta, I don't even mind, like, when people ask me if, like, I'm going to go back to x or something like that. I don't mind it, and I'll tell them, you know, honestly, like, yeah, I, I do plan on revisiting x again, but um, x has got to do a better job to, like, you know, right now I have no, like, I, like I've said, really the only thing that I really truly miss out of x is flying my Q400. That's, that's really it. That's, that's the one, and maybe the 7.5 and the A300 to do some cargo ops but I really only truly miss flying the Q400 and well, you guys know what's happening on Tuesday. So on Tuesday, we're getting an ATR 72, um, which is arguably a, a cooler and better, more, I guess, a little bit more uh, advanced turboprop, if you will. So I'm super excited for that. Super excited to learn that. Opinions on the MD-11, it's a cool airplane. Yeah. Just an observation, all this trash talk uh, back and forth, the majority of it is putting two sims against each other. Pro old P3D has been all but left out of the debate. Odd, there are three. True? Yeah. Maybe like having to install all those libraries to get the sceneries working. Yeah, th listen, like I said, there's, there's so many, you know, plus sides to... You know, the one thing I love about Microsoft Flight Simulator is like when you buy a scenery, you literally run an installer and the scenery is installed. You direct it to the right to the to the right place and it's done, right? And that's it. And like updating it, everything is so easy. Updating anything for X Plane and doing it, it's it's just it's such old architecture. Like having to do, you know, like having to do like your 
um, you know, your scenery I and I file, and like to do stuff like that. Like it's just, yeah. P30 is superior. I mean, listen, dude. Until until Microsoft has the airplanes to back it up the way that P3D has, I could completely understand why somebody would be hesitant to to move over or move away from P3D, especially with the amount of money that they've spent, right? Let's not forget that P3D, you know, you got to pay for each version. So if you're current with P3D, you've bought that simulator, what, four or five times? Um, so, like I said, man, <clears throat> it really depends what your purpose is for for using the simulator it really depends what you're what you're looking to get out of the simulator um like we like we spoke about it before i would say that 90 percent, if not more is just flight enthusiasts right they're not real pilots they're, they're just people that so for a lot of people visuals and and um newer technology are going to are going to pull them right they're, they're going to want to get in, invested in that simulator like I said, it's 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 hard to convince somebody who's just getting into the hobby for the first time. It's hard to convince them that like X-Plane and P3D are, are the best options out there when Microsoft has just made things so easy between the marketplace and the auto installers and you know the any builds apps and the sim uh, the sim market apps and all this stuff, right? Like it's so easy, man. P3D is milking money out of its consumers? Oh, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. But when you're, you know, P3D with their model, man, and the way that they've always done it is, you know, they know the platform that they have, and they know that it's, you know, one of the only, it was one of the only platforms that offered, you know, that type of in-depth third party, right? Like, think about the third party planes that are available for P3D. It's insane, man. When you think so, when you think of things like the, um, you know, Majestic's Q400 to FS Labs with their A3 A320 series, um, you know, it's crazy, man. Yeah. Grego, what's up, man? ECAP, great streams. Do you ever set random system failures and emergencies for your flights? Not really. Uh, reboot. I'll try and rebot. I'll, I'll try and explain as best as I can. I'm not a trained pilot, right? I don't, you know, like other than other than clickbaiting for views and like, oh, chat, my airplane's gonna failure. We're gonna fall out of the sky. Like, other than, click, like, listen, dude, I'm not trained for those situations. I don't even really know, like, what to do. Like, besides maybe turning off the engine and turning on the EPU, like, I don't know, man. I'd rather just simulate a successful flight with a nice departure and a nice arrival. For me, that's, that's much, that, that's much more enjoyable than trying to fake, like, these emergencies and stuff like that, right? Like, listen, I completely understand it, real pilots and stuff like that, like, when they, I know V1 and Flight Deck to Sim and 737 NG Driver and all those guys, I know that they, they all do those types of videos because they're actual real-world pilots, right? Like, they're trained to deal with emergencies and situations and kind of stuff like that, right? For me, somebody who's not trained and has absolutely no clue, like, what do I know if we lose left engine? What do we need to do and stuff like that, right? So it's, to me, it just, it just, it seems a little bit tacky for me to be doing something like that because one, I'm probably not going to do things properly. So you're not really going to be able to learn anything from what I'm doing. Um, and two, like I mentioned, I feel like it's more, it's more like for clickbait. You know what I mean? Like, I, I feel like if I were to do something like that, it's definitely that I, I'm like more so looking for views as opposed to like just a regular flight, a normal flight, you know? To me, like, having to do a good landing in a, you know, where I properly meet my speed restrictions and altitude restrictions and I'm not all over the place and I've set up the airplane, I've prepped the airplane accordingly and properly, to me that's enough to, for, to, to be a nice enjoyable flight, you know? And again, not that I have anything against anybody doing emergencies and stuff like that, I don't. If I knew and I was trained how to do emergencies and how to do stuff like that, absolutely, man, I would do some. But, you know, 
more than half of their airline training and, and simulator time, more specific, is spent dealing with failures and how to deal with failures and SOPs and, uh, you know, pulling out handbooks and reading pages and pages of... Nah, that's not for me, man. Not for me, you know? Have you seen the 820 preview photos? Yeah, we watched the stream yesterday, Ben, live. We watched, uh, we watched the flight. We were on route from Vegas to Sacramento. Yesterday we watched it. Maybe one day. Exactly, man. You got it, dude. You got it. Guys, listen, I see a couple people here just, just going, just going crazy, man. Um, just, just chill, man. X-Plane's night lighting isn't bad. The problem that I have with X-Plane and its night lighting is the way that it's rendered in. That's my only complaint. I think both simulators look great at night. I think Microsoft Flight Simulator at the beginning was way too bright, but they've since fixed that. My big thing with X-Plane at night is you'll be flying along and it'll just load chunks, right? Like it'll, instead of it blending in the way that Microsoft does, like you see lights like off in the distance and then when you move forward towards them, they kind of gradually render in as 3D lights. Explain, you just get these blobs, right? You'll just get this huge chunk, this huge square of space that lights up in lights, but the block next to it, because you're not in that perfect path, the block next to it won't light up, and it it does weird, really weird things. That's my only complaint about Explain's night lighting. Other than that, it does look great. I have no complaints about the night lighting in Explain, but I find it, it it's so... Uh, yeah, it's so, so weird. Did a lot of your old live streams get deleted just noticing it? Uh, no. Make sure you're clicking on the live tab. I think YouTube has like a bunch of different tabs, Cody. If you go to my channel. You have to go to like the live tab. There's home, videos, shorts, and live. If you go to live, it should have all the recent... Okay. Nothing got deleted. They're all there. You can go forever and ever. I'm going five months, six months now, six months ago, eight months ago, nine months ago, ten months ago, twelve months ago, a year. Oh, they're all there, man. Everything is there. They don't appear in videos, but lives. Yeah, videos are for, like, edited videos now. Yes. Aldi, what's up, man? Thanks for your support. Dude, welcome back into business class. Thank you very much for support, man. Really do appreciate you, dude. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Another news, why is the plane called Carol? I have no clue, to be honest with you. Maybe I can go on flight sim, uh, dot to and figure out eight miles till descent. Holy shit, chat. Good thing I jumped inside. There's no way we just blasted through 210 miles. All right, well, let's grab the Metar report here quickly. Um, we'll start the descent. Bring us down to like, we'll start it down to 20,000. We'll start it now, and then we'll enter in the descent data. Jesus, man, we've absolutely blasted through that. Captain, you see the uh, rain sound for sleep? Use the rain sound for sleep definitely helps, yes. Yeah, sometimes. Not all, not every night, but sometimes. Um, who was that? Uh, oh, that was Ollie. Thanks, Ollie. Appreciate you, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I asked you, shouldn't we descend? Yeah, I didn't think... Well, it was like 200 miles out. I didn't think it was time to descend already. Um, why is uh, Nightbot being very slow? Nightbot. Hello? Wake up. Cody! Welcome back to First Class, man. Huge no floaties to you. Thank you very much, my friend. I appreciate you as always. Welcome back, my friend. Good to have you back, dude. Ah, there we go. Okay. Winds, 280 at 15. Good thing we picked runway 29, chat. I guess the sim brief knew something we didn't know. 280 at 15. She, um, 30 degrees. Wow. That is warm. QNH three zero zero seven. We need to go get the minimums here today. We're going to be on the ILS runway two nine. Minimums are 
53.10. Wow. Throw that up into our barrel. Beautiful. Cool. And there we have it. We should be back up onto profile. It actually says we're above profile. Okay, no problem. Um, and what are we descending to? 7,700 feet. I'm going to punch you in. No, no, no. You in. Huh? Thank you. Um, 7,700 feet, chat, is our intercept. So let's put in 8,000 for now. Mandatory. Eight miles out. I mean, it was even doing it with, the, even with extended night lighting, X11. I was still having that problem even with extended night lighting. So, like I said, man, it's just a core X-plane. It's just the way that it draws, it just draws them in. It's, it's one of those things that I, and, and to be honest with you, I really thought that was going to be fixed in X-plane 12, and it's not, unfortunately. The uh, X-plane 12 is just as bad. It still loads lights, and it loads, like, in bricks as you go along. It kind of just loads these big square, these big square things. But listen, um, it doesn't matter. Like I said, man, there's no need to debate this, guys, in chat right now. Like you guys are literally just, you're, you're just, you're just flinging poo at each other. There's no, there's no going to be no winner here, man. Everybody uses the simulator for different reasons, and they're, that's perfectly fine. There's no, there are no issues with that. You use whatever simulator you want. That's it, man. And there's no need to fight about it. Because at the end of the day, fighting about it is just completely silly, man. Because they're, they're using that simulator for a reason, and you're using whatever simulator you want for a reason, right? So, yeah. Mitchell, thanks for the $2.20. Appreciate you, my friend. Huge enough floaties to you. Says, how are you liking the fly-by-wire? It's been good, man. It's been good. Uh, we flew it on Thursday. Really enjoyed it. Had no issues. And uh, I said I would fly it for the rest of the week because it's been so long since we've done any A320 Neo Ops. So it's good that we're doing uh, the A320 Neo Ops, man. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, x -Love. That's what I mean. And that's why I think x 12, to me, like I said, man, there's so many things that I think needed to be changed that just went completely... And, and, and that's one of the big reasons that I'm just currently not interested and invested in x right now. Now, some of the things may get, may get fixed down the line, man. Who knows? Who knows, right? Some of the things that I'm not enjoying or some of the things that I think are issues, all of this stuff may be fixed in, in the near future. And that's why I'm always keeping the door open for x -Plane. I'm never going to say, no, I'm never going back to x -Plane. I have it installed. I keep it updated. But right now, in its current state, it just I just feel that it doesn't deserve my time. It doesn't... Until Laminar Research can make some actual, you know, some actual changes to the sim that deserve some... my attention, it's just not really worth it right now. You know? Transition altitude, 18,500. Let's come down here. Um, 18,500. Init ref. <coughs> Where the hell do I set that again in here? Uh, I, mean, I don't have to set. Oh, transition altitude. 18,500. I was trying to do 19,500. There we go. What's the first ATR flight? I don't know. I don't know. I'm honestly not sure. Your cat is watching the screen. Nice. How's the new flight by wire update? I'm enjoying it. <coughs> Pardon me. I'm enjoying it. No issues for me. Yep. Who guesses the closest foot per minute? Who knows? When will the ATR be released? On Tuesday. Tuesday the 25th. All right, we're making our turn at Lonva above 20,000. We'll just make sure that the airplane is indeed hitting these restrictions. Yep, we're at 23.3, so we're above 20,000. down. I'm not quite sure why it takes us all the way out like that and then down back and in, but we're going to fly it. Um, there are some people flying with us, so we will respect the star. You can see here it kind of takes us all the way down and in. I'm wondering if that's for noise. I don't think it's for elevation. As you can see, there's not really much elevation. So I'm wondering if it's for like a noise abatement. You're kind of getting away from the city because 
normal procedure probably would have us turning in like that, right? Not have this extended by a couple miles out like this. Um, the weatherman Trey, thanks so much, man. Appreciate you, dude. Says Cap, I need to go. Happy landings. Hey, dude. Thank you for your support. I appreciate you. Have a great Sunday evening. And uh, hopefully, I will catch you tomorrow back here in Mexico. So spawning salmon, if you set the airplane up correctly, you'll get what's called a top of descent. And that is a little mark here on your primary flight display, your PFD, that will tell you when it is time to descend. See a little arrow pointing down. And then what you have here is you have what's called managed mode. So this little green ball right here, this is the airplane calculating based on restrictions and speeds and altitudes how fast we should, how fast or slow we should be descending. Again, if you've set the airplane up correctly, you will get this, this type of thing. And this is in most high fidelity payware planes, PMDG, Phoenix, um, you know, Aerosoft, CRJ, you'll get these types of things. So, yeah. Is this the experimental version? It is, yes. Do they have Stizzy? What? I don't know what that is. Have you tried the Cherry Kush cart? Uh, cherry Kush by who? Box Hot? That's what they're called, aren't they? Box Hot? I have their Alien OG. Their Alien OG is pretty good. It's not as tasty as I wanted it to be, though. No, I haven't. Is it good? Cap, download Air Tool for the flight. Get more immersive. Has cabin announcements and boarding music. It's so cool. Nah, no, thank you. I use GSX, man. For me, that's enough. Um, yeah. But if you enjoy using it, there's no problem with that, man. I hope you enjoy it. What's the altimeter? 3006, 3007. No idea about to try it. Cool. Let me know what it tastes like. I'm, uh, I like, I like the fruity strains, but I also really like, like, the danky ones. This is a disposable pod that you put in the battery. It's wax, pretty neat. You should look it up. I've seen them. Aren't they in like California? I don't have a Stizzy. No, I just use regular 510. 510 threaded cartridges. GSX is the buggiest. I really don't have that many problems with it, Aired. As long as you're keeping it up to date, dude, you really shouldn't be having problems with it. Well, to be honest with you, X11, it really shouldn't matter, man. I know that that's, you know, like, who cares, dude? Really, like, at the end of the day, like, you know, you're in a Microsoft Flight Simulator live stream, and I'm not saying that you can't be here, that you, like, you're not welcome, but I'm just saying, man, you're in a Microsoft Flight Simulator live stream, there's probably going to be some comments, and there's probably going to be some people that don't have the best thoughts about the, um, uh, about X-Plane, you know what I mean, man? And that's not, you know... I don't think, I don't think you need to be taking like what somebody's saying, like who cares, dude? Like I said, really, man, who cares? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like who cares what somebody thinks and what somebody says about it? Like it's, you know. Watch out for the lettuce in Texas. Yeah, it's going to be tricky, man. It's going to be tricky, dude. Don't worry. We'll be fine. We'll be fine, man. Might have to take a couple days off. Wink, wink. We'll see. In all opinions, don't let somebody just ruin your mood over a sim. That's what I mean, dude. Go fly whatever you want to fly, man. Who cares if Joe Schmo in the stream doesn't enjoy x -Plane or had a comment about x -Plane that you don't think is correct? It, just, just enjoy whatever you want, man. What's wrong with the lettuce in Texas? <laughs> Give me my first flight with the ATR from Prague to Bratislava and back with CSA, just like a classic flight. There you go. Do you think the ATR will come with liveries? I I would think so. I'd hope so. Yeah. The exactly aired. Yeah. Any previews? There should be some previews. I know that they've done a few streams on it over on Twitch. The uh, the Microsoft Flight Simulator Twitch channel. I know they've done some stuff, but. <laughs> yeah. Kale salad, yes. It's very illegal, Ed, in uh, in in Texas. 
very illegal. It's on the Microsoft Flight Simulator YouTube channel. There you go. Packs or no? Packs is good, yeah. Most states you can get medicinal lettuce, yes. Yeah. Air St. Pierre flights? Where do they fly, Matt? Silver? Yeah, we'll do some silver airways. I mean, if it doesn't come with liveries, we have great people in the community who will make liveries. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. What's the best preset for display quality on the Phoenix? I prefer performance, Matt. I think it looks great. More importantly, it, it, it runs great. So yeah, performance for me. Do you ever use the auto land if the weather conditions require it? Yeah, sure. Okay, I thought so, Matt. I thought, didn't uh, Alex Preglowski make some videos into there? Will the ATR be free? No. Any discount through my Airbus setup? No, unfortunately not, man. Discounts usually happen around Christmas time. Yeah. In Texas, cowboy lettuce is awesome. Hey. By the way, I just heard St. Pierre. It's a French island off the coast of the eastern part of Canada. Cool. We'll have to see if we can get some uh, scenery. Look at this, though, man. This is beautiful. That's got to be like a big fault, fault line. But there's a lot of earthquakes around here, chat. Would you put the renders on? GPU. Yes, GPU, Matt. Presuming you've got a modern GPU, Matt, you're not running like a 1070 or a 1060. Rip to those in chat if you're still running that. Why are the engines blurry? They're not. It's a it's, That's the logo. It's the pixelated logo. It's the Valeris logo. Chat, airborne for three hours and three minutes. I think we're making good time. 13,000 feet, 230 knots. The airplane is meeting these restrictions. The only thing I'm scared about is the speed. It doesn't look like it's meeting the speed restriction. Although it should. Hold on, let's put constraints on. That knows 230 knots, so let's see what the speed does here. Let's really test this. Let's see if at that re restriction, Golf Lima 828, sorry, 824, it actually uh, brings the speed back to 230 knots. We'll see, chat. Then we can see really how good this is, has come along. You're running a 1050? Oof. Cries in 1050. What are packs when calculating takeoff performance in the 320? What do you mean you're like pack Packs are usually always on. Unless you're doing a crazy high altitude departure or something, right? Check FMC. Yeah, no, the FMC is fine. I'm checking to see here. The FMC, like, it should do it fine. It's got, uh, oh no, maybe not. It's got 288 on the speed. Let's see if it does it. We're two and a half miles out. We'll see if it brings the speed back. I don't think it will, but we'll find out. If not, we'll do it ourselves. I'm at 16 gigs of RAM and I jumped to 32 gigs. Will I see a big difference? No, not really. I never, like to be honest with you, like, I'm streaming right now, and I'm using 16 gigs. That's it. So, all right, so it's not using, it's not getting the speed restriction for whatever reason. So we'll do that ourselves. Even though it was showing it on the display, we'll put in 230 knots, which is the speed restriction. Um, we'll ding the cabin. Landing lights are off for now until we're at below 13. But we do have a restriction here. I think we descend from uh, after um, Golf Lima 828. You must put it manually into the FMC? Probably. You can see it coming down now. I just didn't want to mess with anything, man. Beautiful views. That's a good one, Dan. Afternoon, fellas. Back in time. Tony, good to see you, man. 
You have the P3D version of the scenery. It's not bad. There you go. Very cool. Hey, Cap, how you doing? Leo, good to see you, man. See detail speed restrictions. It could be 230 plus. Uh, no, at 230 knots. At 230. So definitely 230 knots. Do you think 32 gigs is better? We can more apps. Yeah, I mean, definitely 32 gigs is better, but like... I don't think you're going to see an improvement in the simulator if you go from 16 gigs to 32 gigs. When is E32NX uh, with the Pratt & Whitney engines coming? I have no clue. I didn't even know they were doing that. I didn't even know they were doing that. Um, I use default, Peter, so whatever default it's, I think, Bing. Yeah, I would agree, Strody. You're not going to really see a difference in performance at all. Yeah. All right, 230 knots, 13,000 feet. Reading our charts, everything's looking good. We'll pause the music here after, uh, after this one. We will get ready for our arrival. I like how there's the Valeris.com. Right up top there looks good. Is that a real vape? What do you mean? A real vape. Yeah, it looks like a key fob, doesn't it? It's pretty cool. I got it because the battery. The battery's insane. My other one I have to charge like twice a day. This thing I can go like three or four days without charging it. Yeah, I'm not sure, Captain Dom, to be honest with you. I really don't know, man. I think I, I think between 40 and 60, but that's just me. But you're, you could be right as well. Yeah. When is the next E310 stream? I have no clue. No clue, man. I'm sorry. We're going to be in the ATR for the next, like, two to three weeks, most likely. We're going to have a lot of ATRs to go. So, you see there is a Philadelphia scenery in the works. There's three. There's one that just released. MK Studios is doing one, and Dominic Design Team is doing one. Crazy, man. With the amount of THC you smoke, how on earth aren't you blazed? Uh, oh, I am. I'm just a professional, sir. Come on now. As Schmitty would say, I'm on the Olympic smoking team. I'm on the uh, Olympic weed team. Right, Schmitty? Man, look at this approach, chat. This is going to be epic, man. Beautiful. Little hill and train stuff like that here. He's functionally blazed. Yes, exactly. Professional. <laughs> Does Thrustmaster have any new peripherals to release at the expo? I think so, Ben. Yes, they are doing a product announcement on Friday. I don't know what it's going to be yet. Um, I don't know if it's going to rely on... I know that they've been focusing a lot on the uh, military side of things. I'm honestly not sure if they have anything to announce for their civil lineup. So, yeah. Would definitely make Team Canada. <laughs> uh, well, the pilot did in the MD-80 in that movie. He was drunk, uh, but saved everyone. What, like, uh, goes like, goes all the way up. Then, like, flips the plane. Any force feedback? There are some force feedback yokes on the market. They are, I believe, $2,000. And a company called Brunner. Brunner? 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 They make them. Ridiculously expensive. All right, we need to be at 9,000 for played. Does it have that in here? 9,000 at played, it does. Okay, good. Good to see it. Good to see it. No, it just deleted that. No, you had that in there. You had played at nine. <coughs> I'm going to go 210 at 9,000. We'll see what it wants to do. Got an airplane in front of us. Great separation. Looks like he's about 10 miles out, 15 miles out. Is Brunner going to be at the expo? No, I don't think so, man. A lot of these companies, they're very, they're very niche, man. 
Like, I'm pretty sure, like, the Brunier yolks, like, they're almost, like, made to order and shit. Like, yeah. Brunier's, like, 4,000 because the prices are in Swiss francs. See, there you go. Yeah, they're crazy, man. The, um... Um... The, uh... The guy that does the sound packs... Why am I drawing a complete blank right now? Who does all the sound packs, chat? It's been like P3D, x -Plane, uh, the Payware sound packs. I'm completely drawing a blank right now. No, not FT Sim. BSS, thank you. Rydog, yes. The blue, sta blue Sky Star, he has a Brunner yoke. Um, he has one. Crazy, dude. So much money. Good job the Embraer was junk, otherwise we'd have to buy handlebars too. Right? Could you imagine getting one? It'd be kind of cool, though. Mitchell, huge no floaties to you, my friend. $10 donation. Huge no floaties, man. Thank you very much for support. Um, Well, I'll let Amy read that one out. Is the transition out to New Mexico a constant 18500 across the country? I have no clue. It's a good question. I don't know. I'd have to check the charts. Yeah. Are Bruno Yolks very realistic? I have no clue, R6. I've never used one, man. I just know that they're they're force feedback. So they have like a feedback on them. I have you'd have to go watch some reviews. I'm sure somebody's made some reviews on it. Yeah. You don't think Amy has read anything in a long time? Because it has to be over three dollars, Dan. A lot of the donations that have come in have been below three. Did you expect more out of the synaptic stream? I personally did. Um, so I was impressed with it. I, I mean, once again, it's a freeware project. So it was really cool to see how far they've come in the freeware project. Um, that being said, I would have liked to have seen some like actual like textured renders. Like I would have loved to have seen what they plan on doing for the cockpit as far as like lighting and PBR and reflections and stuff like that. Um, I also would have loved to have had a release date or at least like a timeline. You know, we plan on getting it out, you know, quarter four, 2023, quarter one, 2024, whatever, right? I would have liked like at least a little bit of a time frame, but at the end of the day, it's understandable in both that we don't have that yet. Textures are usually the last thing that gets done. So I completely understand that the textures weren't, weren't at a point where they were able to show them quite yet. That's pretty normal. Um... So, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say I was disappointed. Um, maybe could have expected those two things or at least something, but yeah. They are a complete drive system. They are awesome. See, there you go. Which version are you using the fly-by-wire? The Experimental. The Experimental is the only one that has the VNAV and the LNAV. So... All right, sounds are going up in the sim. We love your videos. Uh, Dan, thanks, man. Appreciate you. Glad you're enjoying them. Thanks for being here. Diego. Captain, yes. do you like the idea of a modular yoke? Uh, the base of the pendulum system would be maintained, but you could change the yoke design for one from a B737. 100%. B777 or B747. Yes. yes. I, I really, really, really want to speak to Thrustmaster about that exact same thing when we're down at the expo. I think if you can take the base of the pendular and simply, just like you do with their steering wheels, right? You know how on Thrustmaster steering wheels, they have like 10 different steering wheels that you can buy. You can get truck ones, you can get race ones, you can do all, you can get all kinds of replaceable steering wheels. I wonder if we can ever get to the point where they make like a version two of the Boeing yoke and they allow all of the Boeing attachments to it. Yes, I think that would be Insane, man. Insane. So it's official 20 million in gold stolen from YYZ or Canada Cargo. Have they 
they have any leads less. I mean, that's pretty crazy how 20 million of dollars worth of gold just goes missing. How do you use LNAV and VNAV in the 320? Uh, the Airbus has a push-pull feature. So you see how the arrow goes up or the arrow goes down? Pushing in would be up. Pulling out would be down. So it has the push-pull. So it's managed or uh, managed or open mode. How do you even steal that much gold? I don't know, man. If you ever publish a list of your off-camera in-sim pre-flight steps, setting up a call sign, etc., boring stuff would be nice to compare. Um, no, but I, I'm pretty sure, like, I've explained exactly what I do. Like, I mean, it's pretty simple, man. I, I literally go to Flight Radar 24. I come in up here. I figure out, like, where we're going to be going. So, like, for tomorrow, for example, we're going MMGL to, uh, where the hell are we going again tomorrow, chat? Monterey. Um, so we'll go to Monterey, and I'll search, and there's my flights. So I've got Aeromexico, and I've got Viva Aerobus, but there are actual, um, um, whatchamacallit, Valeris operates it as well. These are just the flights that are, like, the next recent flights, 10 of 21. Um, and then, like, I would select one, right? And then, boom, I you hit the little play button here, and then it shows you the routing. If you zoom in, it shows you the start gate, right, where they started. That's the gate that they left from. And then if you zoom all the way on top here at the arrival airport, shows you where the arrival... It's a pretty cool approach. Hopefully we get to do that tomorrow. You can see where they parked on the arrival and stuff. So, yeah. Pretty simple, man. And then I just take this call sign right here. And then I go over to Simbrief. And then from Simbrief, I just import all that information. So, VIV, whatever it was, 31... 3194 then I go over here and I would put in MMGL to MMMY and then I would select my airplane A320 NEO and then the fly-by-wire and there's my flight plan it's everything that I need to know and then I would generate the flight and done just like that super easy it's really not that complex it takes me that part of setting things up is, is takes nothing right no time to do that do you recommend Volanta? Uh, Volanta is a really cool app. Yeah, I don't personally use it, um, but Volanta is a cool app. Yeah. Valeris logo looks like they don't want me to see it. It's all uh, censored and pixelated. It's kind of cool. Yeah. Is it just me or the in-flight displays? I have them turned down to about half. <coughs> I can turn them up. Yeah, I don't I don't like them being so crazy bright. I much prefer them to be a little bit more dimmed. Alright, ground spoilers are armed. Auto brake is set. We are approaching 9,000 feet, which was our inner... No, not our intercept. We just need to be at 9,000 feet for played. I'm going to turn on our landing system. Shows us that we are 19 miles out. I'm going to bring the speed back 210 knots. Good. And we need to intercept... What was it, chat? It was... 7,700. Plug in 7,700. All right. And we are... Well, the aircraft's actually descending quite fine. Maybe we'll just leave it in managed mode for now. Seems to be doing everything properly. It's kind of cool. We're, like, coming into this valley. It's pretty damn cool. All the mountains over here right off the water. It's very nice. Very, very nice. Let's go flaps one. Shows us a little bit above profile, but that's fine. We'll go ahead and arm our localizer. Captured. Lokestar. Love the cloud and the haze. I mean, to be fair, this is one thing that just X-Plane, another thing, and I'm not harping on X-Plane. One of the biggest things when I came over from X-Plane was just this visual. This is something flying in X-Plane for the last six years they've never been able to achieve. And even now, they still really haven't been able to achieve it in X-Plane 12. Um, this is just the coolest feature. 
because I've done so many real world flights where this is exactly what it looks like coming in. You know what I mean? The haze is just absolutely incredible, dude. The, the weather is just wow. No, I don't have Simbridge installed. We're going to arm our approach. See glide slope coming alive here. I do not use Simbriv. Simbridge. I know, because I could have turned on the terrain radar and actually had terrain. I love how the in-op sticker is scratched off now. Do you see that? So for those of you that don't know, Flight uh, Fly-By-Wire has a new um, sim bridge and it allows you to run an external app that will put ground terrain radar on the PFD. So they've scratched off, if you look, if, like previous versions of this airplane, the in-op button was here saying that the terrain on radar, so I like that they've like, instead of, it's just scratched off now, instead of like just removing it all together, kind of little attention to detail you know what I mean it's pretty damn cool man just tiny little things like that that maybe you wouldn't realize until like you you zoomed in and you were like wait a second there used to be a big red in op button right here but it's been scratched off because this actually works now if you're running the proper thing <coughs> I personally think that's really cool I like when I like when there's little attention to detail and stuff have been done like that all right cool we're coming through 10,000 feet <laughs> Uh, sorry, we're through 7,500 feet. Those should have been on a while ago. Um, bringing our speed back down to 190 knots. We are on glide slope. We are currently eight miles out. So I'm going to go gear down. Uh, now, obviously, we're a little bit... Uh, we're getting those call-outs because we are coming over some quite some heavy terrain. I'm going to bring speed back all the way down to 170 knots. We'll just confirm that we have approach phase activated in our... Uh, McDo, which we do, we're looking for a V approach of 132 knots. Good. Let's go ahead and get flaps two. I like that they changed the flap speed as well. I found previous versions of this airplane, the flaps would come out way too fast. So I think they've done a really good job on the animations as well as the, the flap speed, slowing the, the flap speed down quite a bit. Let's go final approach speed today. Let's go and get our runway turnoff, nose lights, and wing lights all to the on position. We'll go flaps three. And we'll go flaps full. Beautiful. And we are currently three miles out. Let's start our replay. Recording. Good. Cool. And we'll do our config check. They are set and config. 1,000. Sound. Sound will go up 1,000 feet. Joystick Cam is on once again. This Joystick Cam is sponsored by the wonderful team over at Thrustmaster. If you want any more information about the products that you see me using, please use the links above or down below. Let's go ahead and my airplane. Thank you. Sounds are going up. Enjoy the arrival, guys. Landing checklist, gear down, three green, flaps full, ground spoilers armed, cabin advised, ECAM, no blue. Let's get it, chat. Let's have a nice arrival. Very hazy here, very warm. 30 plus degrees Celsius. 500. Check. These callouts are loud. 400. Three hundred, hundred above. Minimum two hundred. One hundred. Fifty, forty, thirty. 20, retard, retard, 10, 5. Reversers, nose down gently. Very pitchy. It's 60 knots, reversers stowed, thinking to the right. Ladies and gentlemen, Welcome down. I still don't like my view. I think that's what's throwing me off with my... I still don't like the view that I have. And I don't know if I can... 
fix it. it. Feels weird. Not bad though. Happy with that one. Back up into the flight deck. I don't know why we're. Oh, I have the the parking brake bug where it likes to stop me in the middle of nowhere. Like my view according to this thing is like dead on. Right, right now it should be dead on, but I don't know. It feels weird. I don't know if it's. Uh, I don't know if it's just because it's so different than the um, than the Phoenix view that I have set up. But I always feel really weird on this view. All right, we'll vacate over to here. We're looking for a. Where did they park? I believe they parked at a empty stand. We can clean up our flaps and spoilers as well. Give you a nice view of that. Flaps and spoilers going clean. And we can stop our clocks as well. Three hours and 26 minutes. Three hours and 26 minutes, chat. Remember guys, if you haven't done so, please don't forget to smash down that thumbs up. We were looking for 300 likes on today's stream. Uh, landing lights are coming off, nose light over to taxi, strobe lights are off, wing lights are off, EPU master start switch is on. Good. Hopefully we can hit 300 likes by the end of the stream. That would be much appreciated. Uh, we do have a replay to look at, so that's good. We can stop the recording there. We'll pause that. Bring those sounds down just a little bit. And I'm just checking where they parked. Bear with me here. They went to stand 43. Let's see if we can get it in GSX. Stand parking. Hmm, okay, no, not in parking. Let's see if we can get 43. Gate. Ah, 43. Do they have it? 43 Alpha. No. Uh, Universal Aviation. Good. Should be to our left over here. Let's go ahead and get to the actual gate. A little bit floaty on that landing. Like I said, I think it's just my view. I actually might have a, a better view right now how this one is. This one's not that bad. I may move it just a little bit forward right there like that. That's actually not a bad view. Regardless, still in the touchdown zone. Still in the touchdown zone, still happy with that arrival. Um, 40, what did I say, 43, yeah, we're right here. Wow, okay, good. Look at that. Good thing we're spooling up the APU. Let me get the flaps full for the replay. Unfortunately, we're not going to see if we get a, well, yeah, we can. We'll just turn off the engines. I don't really care if we get sounds. We'll just put music anyways. The flood by wire is kind of floaty anyways. That was really good. It's, it, I find it's very, like, it's, it, like, loves to oscillate up and down on approach. It's kind of, like, if you let go, like, it, it just, I don't know, it's really, really weird. Like, it'll almost dive bomb by itself without you even touching the controls, or it'll, like, start floating without you even touching the controls. It's, it's very weird. It has a very, very, um... Balloony, I guess, is like the perfect word for it, to be honest with you. Feels very balloony. Like it just constantly wants to balloon up and down, up and down, kind of all over the place. APU is on, APU bleed is on. Good. Engine number two is off, engine number one is off. Wonderful. Beacon light is off, seatbelt sign is off. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome down to Guadalajara. Do a dance. No dance, just a bow. Thank you. Um, cool. Sweet. We made it. So the shutdown. The boarding requested. Listen to that. That sounds incredible. Usually we don't we don't listen to the spool down sounds, but my goodness, that was wonderful. Sweet, cool, great flight, guys. I thoroughly enjoyed that one. I hope you guys did as well. I think this is. Uh, only our second ever time into Guadalajara, so that was great. I thoroughly enjoyed that. Love how that does a little bit of a bounce thing there. It was really cool. Thanks, everybody who flew with me today. I hope you guys enjoyed this flight suggestion or these flights. Um, always a blast uh, when we get to do these, so thank you very much to everybody who joined and flew with us today. Uh, tomorrow's going to be a great one as well. Please do keep that in mind if you love Mexican flying. Uh, tomorrow we're going from Guadal Guadalajara to Monterey and then Monterey to Mexico City. 
you're definitely not going to want to miss the Mexico City flight. It's going to be an absolute blast. We're going to be rocking the Valeris Airlines once again. Should be a very fun day of flying. Cool. Thanks, everybody, uh, again for hanging out today. Mods, donator, sponsors, thank you all very, very much for everything that you do for the channel. Um, you know, without you guys here, none of this is possible. So seriously, thank you all very, very much for the support. I truly do appreciate it. You guys are absolutely awesome. We will watch a little bit of the deboarding process here. I really got to run. It's already 4 o'clock, and uh, I got to be there at, at 5, so I've got to leave here in 20 minutes max, and I still have to shower. So uh, we'll wait for the bus to show up here. We'll do a little bit of the deboarding process, um, and then we can kind of have a quick little look-see here. How do you move the drone forward? What do you mean, how do you move the drone Passengers forward? The um, I, use my, I use my keyboard. W A S D W A S D R and F to move up and down, and then you use your number pad four, six, eight, and two. Four to look left, six to look right, eight to go up, two to go down. So when you combine them together, you actually end up with like this pretty intuitive control system, and you actually can like get some really cool angles and get the camera system kind of. I can understand how, like, people don't like the camera system, how it can be a little bit weird. I actually like how much... This door doesn't open? I actually kind of like how much the, how much control it gives you. Um, so, yeah. There's the passengers deboarding. I don't know why you can't... I don't know why the back door doesn't open here. Maybe it's not modeled. Same as the back... Uh, if you look here as well, the back... Um, the back door here isn't modeled either as well. It's a little bit weird. I'm not quite sure why. Not quite sure why. Drink some beer? Uh, maybe with her dad. I might have one. Probably not, though. Probably not, man. A lot of calories in beer. Counting calories. Go to the EFB. Now you can't do it in the EFB either. Uh, I've tried. Go to the EFB. Um, there's only the door aft, but it opens this one. Like, it opens... It opens that side for catering. It doesn't open this side. That's weird. Real, real weird. Anyways, let's go to GSX. Let's go ahead and restart the Kutau script. Let's close all the doors. Close you, close you, close you. Good, wonderful. Let's go ahead and get all of our lights back on again for our replay. And we will go watch our replay, shall we, chat? Should be a good one. Nice and smooth. Let's go up top here. We'll hit the play button. Hey, there we go. We'll bring it forward here just a little bit. Okay, yeah, no problem. No problem. It's okay. It's okay. Well, hopefully we don't hear that in the uh, in the other views. Uh, no, you don't. Perfect. Don't hear it. Cap, you ever do any private jet ops? Yes, but I don't know when, man. I don't really fly private jets, to be honest with you, man. I love flying my commercial jets. This is my this is my bread and butter. But I will. Um, we do do community fly-ins and stuff like that. I do want to do like a business jet community fly-in sooner than later where we kind of do like a, you know, a 200 nautical mile flight or something like that and a bunch of business jets. I do want to do something like that in the near future. So we'll see, man. We shall see. Kai, what's up, man? Good to see you, dude. Yep, just finishing up the stream, man. Just finishing up the stream, man. Definitely nice and smooth. Beautiful landing, to be honest with you. Just a little bit longer than probably we want to see. But uh, overall, not bad. If the engine's not spooling, I can hear the alarm dinging in there. So we'll have it. Uh, we'll end it right there, my friends. Thanks so much for support. I appreciate you. Simplaz is a scam. Do not. Listen, dude. Again, please don't mention those things. I can't control you for doing what you want to do with your own time. But here on the channel, man, we don't talk about that, those things. So please don't talk about that. Yes, it is a scam. You should not be downloading from websites like that. You should always be supporting developers and stuff that you uh, that you want to do. Um, alrighty, guys. Thanks for coming to hang out today. You know the plan for tomorrow. Guadalajara to Monterey to uh, Mexico City. Going to be great. Going to be fun. Super um, high elevation landing tomorrow in Mexico City. Should be a blast. Guys, thanks for coming to hang out today. Again, mods, donator, sponsors, thank you all for the support. Truly do appreciate it. You guys are absolutely awesome. To everybody else who cannot afford to donate using a monetary value, but you're still here stream after stream hanging out. 
Really do appreciate you, man. Thank you guys just as much for being here and uh, watching and sponsoring and supporting the stream. So look forward to seeing you guys all tomorrow. Enjoy the replays. Have yourselves a great um, Sunday evening. And I look forward to seeing you guys all tomorrow for our Monday stream. Happy landings, my friends. So